good afternoon to everybody. I'm Scotty McKeever. I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we've got the Coast to Coast Pick 5 here from Gulfstream Park and Santa Anita Park, a player-friendly 15% takeout, and we're going to have those races for you today. We'll play that together along with a lot of other races from uh, all the Stronic Group tracks, Santa Anita, Gulfstream Park, Laurel Park, and Golden Gate Field. So we've got four tracks on the docket today. We can talk about anything you want to talk about. Let me know what you like. Get involved in the chat room. That makes it a lot of fun. And hopefully we'll see a lot of booms today as well. Big shout out to Justin and Oldie for their stretch run show. Amazing. They're doing a wonderful job. If you haven't yet checked that out, you might want to do that. And uh, they gave out, uh, I think they gave out a couple of pick fives, a pick four. I don't know. They're they are literally on fire. I'm feeling the pressure today for sure to... Uh, to, uh, to come through. So hopefully my handicapping is going to be on. Uh, I, I I felt a little bit better today. I've been a little bit cold, but today I feel like my picks were, were pretty good. I think I'm seeing things. I might have found a, a little um, tool to uh, on how to use the metrics together. I, I, I'm going to test it out. I test, tested it out this morning and it was pretty good. So uh, hey, Jay, what's going on, Mike, Alan, Aaron, uh, Scotty in the house. Alan, hello to you. And Bluegrass Dan. Jay, what up, my man? How are you? And Kent, looking forward to uh, today. Took yesterday off because they had canceled Santa Anita. What's up, oldie? Um, thank you, Aaron. You're such a you're such a stud, dude. Seriously. Lexi, how are you, Lex? Um, it's always good to be here with you guys. You know, when I think about this, you know, I started this. We started this, what, three years ago? And, uh, and I was in Newport Beach at the time. Do you guys remember? And and we've been doing it ever since. And uh, it's just, uh, I, mean, I think we started off our first show. I want to say there was like 10 people. And uh, it's just, it's really incredible. And it's its something that uh, I'm pretty proud of. The team is really proud of. And and now we've got the stretch run show that's here to stay. And and I'm going to, we're going to be picking up a new show this Saturday. Um, we'll, we'll have some surprises for you, but look for that Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Okay. I'm going to do my weekend spot plays. So look for that, those notices. So 10 a.m. Eastern time. You have to get up a little bit early on the West Coast. Not too bad, but it'll be kind of fun. We'll uh, get up and I'll talk to you about what I like in the weekend's races. So Saturday mornings. So a new show coming up. Scotty's Spot Play weekend. So, all right. So Leslie, hello to you. Doug, hello. Uh, Delroy, Jim, Mike, Eric, Chuck, Leslie, what up? Man, look at this. What a... Hopefully we're going to have a big group today and we're going to have a lot of fun and win some money. So uh, Laurel Park, race number six, you can see I have a spot play here and let's see what it is. Three to two Equine Edge morning line and top EE pick on me, darling Kathleen. Um, looks like a player with the six. The horses in this race, from what I can see, they like to stop. I've got an eight, six ice cold exacta Dave Weaver style. Um, and so we'll look at that. Good luck to you as well, Carl. Um me, darling Kathleen, has run three different times. So um, I'm on the staging site. So if you see missing information like trainer here, don't worry about it. If my information is a little bit different than yours, don't worry about it again. Um, I'm testing the new site, which we'll be releasing soon. So, hey, Tony, Andrew, what up? Nice hit, Andrew, uh, as well. Um, also, thank you so much for all the tweets. When, when you guys tweet this stuff out, you don't even know. It surprises me when you guys send out a tweet on some of your hits how many new people subscribe? It's just an amazing thing. Can't thank the, the EE community enough for that. The team really appreciates it. We love you guys. And um, it's just been, it's just been really neat. We have grown leaps and bounds in a month's time. It's really, uh, there's something going on, but, um, uh, and, and just, we, the team can't wait, wait for the release. We're excited about that too. So, and we got this new show, of course, I think the stretch run show is really making a big difference seeing, um, seeing Oldie and, and Justin's face and and getting my face off the screen, you know? It's too much of me is no good, no bueno. A little bit, a little bit, but um, so we'll see what happens there. If you know, I'm looking possibly at another show, possibly. Um, and uh, if, if you guys know somebody very good and looking for a couple of not older people, and maybe, you know, mid-range, mid-age, younger, to uh for a possible new show so if you know anybody you know let me know um it's not going to be easy it's going to be very picky so um if you don't really have any experience please please don't apply okay <laughs> love you guys but um 
but I really want to make sure that we uh, we get the right two people for our next show. So again, we're adding my show. It's going to be um, Spot Play Weekend with Scotty, and uh, I'll cover weekend shows every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Okay, so. All right. Not even your wife wants to see your face. all. I get it. I get it. Totally. Um, so, OK, let's go in this race. The what do we have coming up? We'll play pick fives. You know, those, we've got Laurel Park coming up and I happen to have this is the last Scotty spot play of the day. Um, you can see I, I didn't do bad here. I gave Disco Queen. I really liked and I gave out the exact to here um, two six. I was shocked how much this paid. You guys really didn't bet this. I bet this. Now, you guys didn't even bet this, and this came in cold 2-6, so we had that. This horse disappointed. This horse was 8-1 to one Frosty O'Toole in the opener at, at Goldstream Park. I was shocked. I, this horse just had no excuses, finished like a champ in his first race, and and but uh, the four horse, she's a joy, ended up winning that race, paid, paid 10-20. So um, you too, huh? I, I Yeah, this here... Uh, she's a joy. I like this horse, but I really got caught up in the the way this horse galloped out in its first race and it broke slow from the rail, but it just didn't win. I had, a, I had some some good races today. It was better. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident uh, going into today. So let's look and see who we maybe can pick up for an exacta here. Um, me, darling Kathleen. So one of the way, one things I look at is to see that the the EE win percentage is, is going up, right? We want to see that a little bit. So um, 40% or 40 SOR, today's a 40 SOR, 14%, now it's 21%. But you also want to look at the trip a horse might get. What I'm hoping for is, first of all, this, this horse doesn't have a ton of speed, but you want to look to see if horses are, are stopping. Like this horse is eight lengths back, 18 lengths back. Now I know it's only a first race, so has every right to improve. But you see this? Like horses losing ground, like the five. I This five is a player in here, but I think it's going to stop. This one's slowing down. This one's slowing down. This is where I don't like taking key horses that come from far back, but I just feel like, you know, a lot of these horses are just, you know, stop. This is an interesting horse here, lovely Lisa. Five to two morning line, six to one Equine Edge morning line is 38% to win. I thought it was these two horses. I think I put that in here. Yeah, eight, six. So I, th I think it's the six and eight. You know, maybe put a win bet on the eight and then do an exact box, six, eight, just in case the six gets up and beats the eight. But I think with a good break, if, I, if I've if i read this properly, I think that the, the six horse, or not the six, but the rest of these horses will will uh, slow down. Here's the other thing I've, I've, I've noticed. If, if, if you're an Equine Edge customer, if you're seeing the win percentages low on horses, right? And, and they're the speed horses. There's a high likelihood that those horses will, will go and then stop. And then the class of the race, which is the, the six and the eight, will pick up those pieces. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing right now. So I, I, I see the six and eight um, finishing. Here's the, here's the deal, though. This six horse has only raced one time. It's dropping big in class. It has every right to be the money run, meaning they'll give a horse a race. They gave the horse a race at, at uh, Delaware and they bring it here to Laurel Park, put it in for 12.5. The horse has got a race under its belt. And here's the thing. It does get first run on the eight, meaning the pace number is a 47. It faced a 50 group. And, and so the six horse has every right to run good and it's 38% to win as well. Especially that, exactly. Exactly. So let's take a look. They're at the gate. All right, let's see what happens here in this race number six. Good luck in your wagers. Andy Rochelle next up. And Dave Rodman's going to have your call. Sister Spirit. Lovely Liza. Quick Quai. Me darling Kathleen, nine to five. Exclusive Rose. And Breezy Lay. My darling Kathleen, two to one. Lovely lies also two to one. Mm -hmm. 
and Jimmy the Book. And they're off. It got a really good start, which is huge. Cammy Rochelle very fast. Even if you Quite come from behind, it's still important to break good. Lovely lies there on the outside. Exclusive Rose and Sister Spirit on the chase there from fifth position. And they're followed by a breezy lead. Out widest of them all is Jimmy the Book for the backstretch run. Here's me darling Kathleen. In between horses, six to seven lengths of the pace. And Peace Fire has to pick it up. His last heading into the far turn run with four furlongs left to go. Quick quiet half length from Cammy Rochelle in second. Exclusive Rose and Lovely lies of the third and fourth. Me darling Kathleen has worked up to fifth. Now six on the front and sister spirit down to the inside. On the outside there is Jimmy the Book continuing a very wide journey. Then back to Breezy Lee and Peace Fire trailing the field top of the stretch. And it is quick fire to one to catch. And Cammy Rochelle there to the outside. And lovely lies are driven along in the third spot of between horses. Me darling Kathleen still at an even pace. The inside is sister spirit into the stretch. And quick play and Rebecca Lavari in front, opening up now, two and a half lengths out the center, lovely Liza's coming now, lovely Liza and Carol Sedeno picking up quick by, quick by went a long way at a big price, but lovely Liza's got it, lovely Liza going away, lovely Liza to win by four at the finish, quick by second and then it was me darling Kathleen six, and three, eight. Michelle, so the six the horse getting first run, 38% to win and hopefully some of you had that horse though and, uh, and one going away hey Gary at 15.58. Good effort. Second time starter. That horse lost by 16 lengths in its last start. 38%. I don't know how the I don't know how the win percentage algorithm does that actually. I really don't. I mean, you lose by 16 lengths in your first leg, but and then it's 38% win the next time out and wins for fun. Eight horse, me darling Kathleen, really made a nice move. Like it was gonna this horse has issues for sure. I mean, it was moving like a good thing on the on the about the three eighths pole, and then just kind of leveled out. So it's got its issues. You had the six eight exacta. So gets the win. All right, what do we got coming up? We've got Goldstream Park race number seven. How about we do a pick four? Uh, I did handicap these races, so just look for my notes. Uh, we'll do a $60 pick four, okay? I have a note on the one, an old note that says no excuses in this race. Um, here's the thing. This horse is coming in from Saratoga for Wesley Ward. It's going on the synthetic for the first time. The GSR drops 13 points. It has the most speed in the race. Can it go all the way? I guess it can, but... It's pretty much dead on the board. It's seven to one. Um, I felt like the five needed to be forwardly placed. Now, here's the thing. Maybe this horse can rate. Maybe it can't. I don't see that it can. And when you have a horse as fast as the one horse, then that means that the, the jockey on the five is going to be close to the one. And, and that means the five is going to be going faster than what it probably wants to go, which for me means I would probably lean against it. So I would probably not use the one in five. Then... You look at the four horse, Spicy Ginger. This horse looks really good. Really won easily last time out. And Carlos David claimed this horse for $20,000. And it won easy. Here's the thing. Horses only come back to win against winners after breaking their maiden 5% of the time. But this horse looks like the real deal. Look what he does. He takes this horse in for a 20000 maiden claimer in for a $35,000 tag. It's only a non-winners of two lifetime. But you don't usually see that. I mean, that's for a 20000 maiden claimer... You'd be lucky to see this horse in a 12-5 claimer and the horse is in for, for 35000 So, And it looks like this horse can rate no problem. And the where I see that is here in, in two races back. And it, it look, at, it raced against some nice horses over at, um, over at uh, Belmont. So my guess is they came in here. They probably had a lot of horse. They probably hoped they didn't get this horse claimed. And it, and it got claimed. And it can probably come right back and beat this, this weak group. Hey, Doug. So... I, I I like the four horse. I would imagine this four horse is going to run a good race. Probably sitting in third place behind the one and the five. I it don't think it needs to be second behind the one. I don't think, and, and hopefully it won't be. And uh, Luis Saez also gets off the five to ride this horse. 
I don't think you're taking Luis Saez off this horse. I really don't. I know you got Rosario, but I'd, I'd really be surprised. Rosario is also going to look at this horse and go, I got to be close to the pace. That's what I imagine he's going to think. It is the Equinedge second pick. I don't want to talk you completely off of it. It's just not my type of horse. Um, it has rated before. If you look at this, six furlongs on the turf, tweaked on 925. Um, it wasn't a bad race. This three horse, more strength. Very interesting horse here. Um, this one won last time out against a 44 group. Now it's moving up in class. It's um, it's GSR is a 71, so it likes the synthetic. This is the second time on the synthetic, and it won last time out. And so just based on that, maybe this horse at 16 to 1 is, is worth a look. So in this wide open race. Into Turing is the top back one edge pick. And uh, this one's 28%. This one, the problem with this one, it just doesn't really break very good, but this one should be finishing. I would imagine that the Equinedge top pick, uh, Into Turing looks really good. Love my job. Uh, this one faced a similar group last time out, got fifth by two. It didn't run bad. I, I still don't know if it can, if it's, uh, this is an easier group. It's coming back at the same level. Um, I if let's see this horse is coming out of that 1214 race the same as the seven horse who got fifth by two coming back at the same distance and the two horse came from even further back and finished so I'd probably give a better look to the two horse than I would the seven who's 20 percent um I like I like two and six best. I'm going to take the top two win percentages I, and I, I would probably throw the four in there. So I actually like the horses that the Equinex picks are using. Race number seven is coming up in about 10 minutes from now. All right. So through all that, I'm coming up with the same thing that the picks are coming up with. Hey, Manny. Hey, Kevin. So, all right. Next leg. You just want to throw out horses like this. 50 to 1 Equine Edge Morning Line, 1%. We'll get rid of that. Same thing here. Um, this horse, look at 9 to 2 odds maker, 10 to 1. There's really nothing really indicating that I can see. Oh, I, I like the 4, 5, and 6. I already looked at this race. So um, 4, 5, and 6, and then long shots, 7 and 8. But I, I thought you could probably just use the 4, 5, and 6 on the win. But that's what I liked. By the way, unless if you're good with the race, you don't want to um, keep horses. You don't want to keep this open, right? So if you if you don't lock it, it could add other horses. So um, I like I like the two, four, and six in the first race. So I don't want it to add any other horses. So um, it did add the three. If you want to throw the three in there, it's just a hunch. You could do that. Next leg, we've got the three, four, and six. And um, this is going to be part of the coast to coast as well. Race number nine, three, four, and seven is what the system is using to the pace, but I think the two will stop. Um, I thought the six was a decent long shot. So I probably want to add these horses in here. I wasn't really that sure in this race. So we'll add that. Then we'll come over here and look. The five claim for twenty thousand dollars impulsiveness. I thought these. I thought this was a wide open race as well. Let's see how much this ticket will be if we if we had our druthers. Let me see. It's going to be expensive. It's kind of got to be probably one one forty or something like that. Let's see what happens. One thirty five. So I don't think. I think if you, we hit this, you would get your money back minimum and maybe even make money. I really do. So it might be worth it. Like even in this opener for the pick four, you can see that they really can't narrow down, you know, who they like in here, the betters meaning, right? So possibly it's worth playing this ticket. If you don't want to play that big of a ticket, believe it or not, 
as crazy as I, I thought the Equinage long shot might be the horse to beat the six horse, six to one Equinage morning line, 16%. This is the type of horse that uh, Oldie and Justin look for. And because of them, I started looking at stuff like this as well, where you sort the Equinage morning line and you kind of look at horses, you look at the win percentage, you look at the other metrics as well. Um, an example of this would be the nine horse quantum theory, six to one Equinage morning line. It's 13%. You might say, well, 13% doesn't sound like much. No, but when the top win percentage is only 23%, then 13% isn't bad, right? And then, so Oldie's singling this one. And I mean, this this one's fast, no doubt about it. Um, I'm having a hard time with this because it's it's got a low win percentage. Um, I mean, it... It did go gate to wire here against this 48 group on the turf. It's got a low GSR as well. Uh, but Jose Ortiz jumps on. I, listen, I could never talk. talk. Are you liking those? Thank you so much, Clint. I appreciate that. Um, I've been a bit cold lately, but today was better. So... I couldn't talk you off of the one because of the, the speed and the horse has been off a layoff. Let's get this person out of here. Um, but with that kind of speed, Wesley Ward could be very dangerous. No question. Um, really a, an interesting horse is this three horse more strength. It's 13%. It's one for one at the surface and distance, albeit against easier. And it's got a 71 GSR. I mean, why can't this horse come right back and win? Could be tough. So, you know, it's just really good. Hey, hey Cindy, it's going to come down to, to how you want to, how you want to play this for sure. Um, oh, no wonder this is not working. Okay, there we go. So they're on the synthetic and um, the recommendation would be take a chance on this six horse in the last leg. So you could do something like this. That is very small, 2250, right? So depending on your budget, this will, you know, wouldn't cost much, but the upside of this, if the six wins the last race would be great. To be honest with you, I feel really comfortable, except, I, I mean, this race here, I think I've got the winner, but you, I always will worry about a horse like the the one who has that much speed. And I can't say that this five horse can't win, but I'm just going to, I think the five needs to be too near the one. I think the one's got its issues. And so I'm going to play against these two front runners, which is not for the faint of heart, for sure, as they load into the gate. All right, let's get out to race number seven here. Pete Aiello has the call. Five to two favorite is number four, Spicy Ginger. She's taken a lot of play on the Eborn change. Size for Carlos David. Three to one, respect for two. No, they say rather she was tr troubled in her most recent, came rolling and ran out of time. Four to one on into Turing. Tweaked is four to one. She was favored last time, tweaked. Love my job readies. Magniloquent, speedy daughter of American Pharaoh. Letting board starts to tighten in a touch. Three to one, two and four, seven to two on tweaked, four to one into Turing. This might be the one. Long shot to the outside. Race seven at five eights on the Tapita track to start today's late pick four. They're in the gate. And they're off. From the fence, Magniloquent comes up firing and leads a length and a half early on from more strength away in second. Spicy Ginger rushing to catch up. She's up on the outside third. 
Away racing in fourth is tweaked, then back to this might be the one. Interturing is together with Nase, and at the back is Love My Job. Half a mile from the finish, off the sharp break, Magniloquent leads to the turn on top by two. Spicy Ginger is second, More Strength is third. Tweaked, Green Colors now races in fourth. A gap of three to this might be the one and love my job. At the back are Nase and Inter Turing, and at the front is Magniloquent. Magniloquent trying to keep her speed on display. She leads a length and a quarter. Spicy Ginger in hot pursuit second. More strength at the rail third. They straighten for the drive. Magniloquent still has the lead with an eighth of a mile to go. Spicy Ginger tries to make ground second. More strength is now third. Then it's tweaked. Final 16th of a mile. Spicy Ginger is not going away. She's charging hard. Here's Spicy Ginger in time. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Sanders oldie. She had to work on her for three-eighths <laughs> of a mile, but she ran down. I mean, quit third is more for my straight. ticket, I'm happy, but I, I'm sorry for you. That That's just a rough one. That one ran huge. The four horse ended up, uh, the one we talked about early, ended up winning tactical speed. Um, wow. Yeah, that, that is painful. That's That's hard to take. If you single a horse like that and you lose like that, that's oof. Oof. I'm sure a, a, a lot of everybody out there probably threw in that one as well. All right. Wow, what a race. What a good ride. Very good ride. That's uh back to back wins. You know, it again, what a claim, right? By Carlos David. Very difficult to go claim a horse for twenty thousand dollars and then put this horse up. And that horse was very consistent. Um thanks, Joe. Them. I appreciate that. I know that's okay. We got this. Come on. It's going to be a good, it's going to be good for everybody. Um, not in that one. I know, but you know what I, you, you, a lot of times, at least, you know, you're on, you're, you're looking at stuff properly for sure. You know, and um, it was a very good call. I did too. I, I thought so too. And we, we we literally called that perfectly. I knew I didn't like tweak though. But and that, and that that bodes well for me that I'm seeing things like that. Like because I really didn't like that horse. And that horse ended up going off as the five to two favorite, which is crazy. A nine percent horse that's the five to two favorite, whew, throw that out every every time, folks. Every time. Winner is four hey, Ken. spicy ginger, second is one magniloquent. Third All right, three, so unofficially four, one, three. We talked about that three horse more strength. Really liked that horse. You can see, and you can find long shots this way. Look at find one or two metrics that are leaning that are, that are pointing towards this horse. Well, the 13% in a race where the top win percentage is low, 28%, and then the top GSR. And one for one at the surface and distance. That would be a reason maybe to throw this horse in the exotics, right? Especially when you think maybe one or two of the speed horses is going to stop. And um, so I almost threw that three on the ticket. But all right, we're moving on. Where should we go now? We got... Uh, By the way, you guys have probably seen this. So you guys have this now. You, you can come over here, click on the coast to coast. Okay. Look how easy it is to play the coast to coast wager now. So you come here, you click. All you do is you go to the track drop down, click on coast to coast, and you can play whatever denomination. It's a $1 denomination. Don't forget, it's only a 15% take up. And you come in here and you go, okay, my budget's going to be 120 bucks because it's a $1 denomination. It gives you a ticket. Then you can come over and you can make changes as you please, depending on the horses you like. And um, that's all you have to do. That's it. Very simple to use. This there, this is the, and you can do this with the golden hour wager as well. Is there a golden hour today? Yeah, golden hour wager. You can do the exact same thing by clicking here and you get the same thing. 
look at how easy it is to play this wager. It's really incredible. And big shout out to Brad and the team for getting this working like this because it, it's not easy. But anyways, the first leg of the Coast to Coast starts in Race Number 8 from Goldstream Park. Again, it goes from Race Number 8 at Goldstream, goes back, goes to Race Number 9, and then goes to Santa Anita Race Number 3, back to Goldstream Park Race Number 10 for Leg 4, and finishes off in the in Race Number 5 at Santa Anita. So that makes up the Coast to Coast wagers today. All right. All right, so, you know, I was going to go to Laurel, but I think we're going to stick with Santa Anita. How's that sound? We'll go to Santa Anita race number one, 12 minutes before that race, and we'll play a pick five. Sound good? All right, so we'll do um, an $80 ticket. What up, Andrew? Thank you. We have so many of these things. These Not a lot, but we've got different ones, like gray and and um, a few. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna get more. Yeah, right? How, well, how, what studs they are, right? You know, um, Oldie and Justin are doing that on their own, just so you know. Like, I had nothing to do with, with them giving away um, partial of their tickets. So, pretty amazing. Thank you, Linda, for bringing that up. These hats are so quality. We're going we're gonna to get a bunch. The only reason... Listen, you, we talked about this last week. I want to get give out i'm not even trying to sell it i give out a lot of the um the equine edge uh stuff but it's such a pain in the ass to ship it so we're trying to figure all that out right now we don't really have a distribution center to do all that just yet so um we will i don't have any idea bills does anybody know if san Anita's track is fast yeah thank you so much i appreciate it daniel um actually these hats are pretty expensive these particular ones we paid a lot of money for. Um, they're, they're, these are really high quality hats, as hats go, anyways. Okay, let's do a pick five over at Santa Anita Park. Um, do me a favor, really. Like, I handicapped Santa Anita a little bit. I did my eliminations. But if you guys have a point on a horse, please tell me. Yeah, please tell me. Because um, I, it, it, you know what it does? It gets me to go look even closer at something, right? So so don't hold that back. If you like something, please bring it up. As far as the GSR goes, right, 59 to 62, I'm not even looking at the GSR anymore because there's no difference right there. Now, what you might want to do, there does seem to be a difference between with the four-horse Worcester, who's 7 to 1, but its class is a 46, and this is what this means. So the fact in this SOR over here is telling you that today's conditions is 6.5 on the dirt, and none of these horses has gone six and a half on the dirt. That's why there's no number in here. That's why there's no um, statistics in there or numbers. And then you come over here. This is the last five races averaged as far as the competition. So the class. So essentially strength of race is SOR. That's our class number. Now, if the horse has only had two races or three races, it's, uh, it's not exactly divided. Just so you know, there's some other things put into it. So if you ever see two races and... One of them was a 56, the other one was a 58, and you think it should be 57. It's not exactly like that. So um, there's some magic in there as well. So if you – oh, and by the way, here's another thing that many of you don't know. Once a horse is raced against winners, the SOR will not look at the maiden races anymore as far as numbers. So when you look at He Jazzy, because this horse is raced one time against winners, that was a 72 SOR – um, I don't think it is. Hmm. I don't know what it's doing there, honestly. Here, this horse race against a 56 and a 46. So that's right. This one seems to be averaging. Oh, I know why. Once a horse breaks its maiden, and that didn't happen here. So that's why it's averaging these three races on the one. There you go. 
No, that's what it is. Okay. And I, I think it's important for you guys to understand how it works. But if if this horse had won the made the last maiden race, then this number, this SOR number here would be 72. So this is why sometimes it's good to to look at uh, at uh, past performances. And you know, you can only you all, all you need to do is glance at it. So three million dollar horse. Like I was really confused. I thought I just got really embarrassed. <laughs> um, so, anyways, that's that's what it is. Now you have to ask yourself on this horse: Do you? I mean, it it ran a huge third, no doubt about it, in that race in the American Pharaoh. Uh, I don't think Bob Baffert would have put it in the American Pharaoh if he didn't think that this horse was good. You know, who did it lose to? I don't know. Let's see if we can take a look and see. This is a feature that I'm testing. Speedboat Beach, which is another Baffert horse, I believe, isn't it? Yep. And uh, this horse has come back to be be pretty decent. Racing the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Didn't run good there, though. Has won three races and four starts. So this is who he jazzy lost to. Another Baffert horse. Who at the time was a first-time starter. So that's not bad. Okay, so we see that. Now we want to look at Sully. What's Sully's story? So this is a a horse that is a, a John Sheriff's horse. Let's see. All right. So that's not going to show us that. If it shows that, then it's just a bug. All right. So we'll look at the other horse here. This is another Baffert horse who didn't run very good in its first start, Worcester. And uh, it wasn't a particularly strong maiden group as well. And this first time starter, Faustin, for Baffert won. Um, Sonoran is another Baffert horse. And uh, this horse really didn't run very good, did it? Didn't seem to have any excuses either. I, You know what? I remember liking this horse. It was 28% to win. And I, I do remember liking this horse. I'm just going to be really surprised that this horse improves that much. And this horse... Oh, we can't pull that up again. That's right. Um Who's the speed? So the one and six are fast. So you can see these two horses dueling. Could the four improve second time out? I don't know. I mean, could you see the one and six just dueling? I don't know that I see. I mean, I would imagine Victor is going to ascend. Will Mike Smith let, let Victor go? He might. War Worcester has a 15% chance of winning in here as well. I don't know that I'm just ready to just completely throw it out in its second start. Maybe it needed the race somehow. I don't know. It's GSR really doesn't go up that much. Faustin is a monster. Maybe we should leave the horse in there just in case. So using those three. All right, make sure we're good. Five minutes to coast to coast. Or no, not coast to coast, but to the big five. Here, Sacred Beauty. This is a 10,000 claimer. Second place last time out, 35%. Um, Saldano takes over. You should always look at the changes. So Saldano claims this horse for 10,000. And uh, Franco jumps aboard. Raced on the synthetic. The GSR stays fine. If you look at this, three tries on the dirt, this horse has earned 2,800 per start. And on synthetic, 4,900 per start. If you look at the GSR tab, um, dirt should not be a problem. So what could have happened is, is maybe on the dirt, this horse faced tougher horses when it did go on the dirt. And um, no, that wasn't the case either. It, it actually has run good on the dirt. I think this is a really consistent horse. Can throw out probably the last three races face tougher competition today. It gets easier competition. I would imagine the one horse will be a major player in here. This horse is dropping a, a bit in class. You know, I, I would worry about this horse a little bit, you know, really liking to win. It sure has burned a lot of money, but that's a you know, Harris is a killer trainer. Andrew Harris, 29%. Unbelievable. Secret square. Last sprinted here at Santa Anita. And now stretching out. 
I mean, I'm kind of support uh, surprised this horse has a 15% number. It gets 115 pounds today. So a seven pound break. Um, it seems, well, no, it's rated before. I don't know what happened in the last race. Let's see. Bumped at the start. Step slow ra the race before that. The race before that, forget about it. That was embarrassing. I don't even know. It, it, like the horse's form is terrible. It seems to be near, need to be near the, the pace and it could have the lead. Okay, so I I like the one best there, but I don't think I can separate them. Three minutes before this race is Santa Anita. All right, the this horse here, Hero High. I mean, I think Holden Luke can beat this horse. Bold Endeavor. Peter Miller claims this horse. I thought this horse deserved a look, but I, I do think this race is between the one and the two. Um, would I be surprised if this horse... Off the claim for Peter Miller? No, I wouldn't. He claims for 50 grand. But how many times you see a horse for 50 grand come back and win an optional 80? I think this horse is, a you know, maybe for the exotics. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna prefer the exotics here. But if you can use the three, it certainly would be better. Let's see if we can get the three in there. I would love to be able to get it. Um, looks rare. I mean, just such a huge, huge pace. Six to five Equine Edge morning line, top Equine Edge pick. Looks like a top GSR as well, right? Top GSR. I mean, this is the type of horse you're looking looking for. It broke from the rail last time at Endul and still held on. Doug O'Neill claimed this horse for 50000 puts it in for uh, – no, it didn't claim it. Let's see what happened here. Okay, so Leandro, um, when Doug was on suspension, was, was – uh, that horse so um this horse dropping in class certainly deserves a look i i do think it's these two horses um but the the one horse certainly i mean that's that that speed looks awfully dangerous um i would even probably single this horse then we can definitely get that three horse in in the third leg for sure there it is is it nine minutes to the coast to coast? Race number eight. It is. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Race number eight. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Yep. Thanks for, for the reminder, Oldie. All right. And then and then we got to use all these horses here in the last. All right. So this is the ticket I'm recommending. And then if we do get to this part, um, then if we do get to the single in race number four, then maybe we can we can do some sort of uh, exact a box three one to get our money back just in case the three wins. So that's what we'll do. So we'll they're going to the gate here again. One four six with one three four with one two three with one with two three five seven nine, and we've got the one four six in here. Um, there's going to be a lot of race riding in here. I would imagine that maybe Sully will go. I'm going to be curious. If I was Espinoza, I would utilize that that outside post. But let's see what happens here. Frank Maramani with a call. Here's the opener Sully from Santa Anita Park. Talk. They're in the gate. And they're off. Sully and Worcester are the first two out. Tiz talk on the far outside. Here's Hajazi now rushed up along the inside. And Hajazi is going right after the lead and taking it, coming to the 5 eighth pole. Hajazi is the leader. Opens up nearly a length on Sully second. Two more Worcester in third. Followed by Speed of the Nile. I don't get it. Inches up down at the rail. Two more back to Tiz Talk, and the distant trailer is slow starting the last one perk. Heavily favored, Hejazi takes him to the 3 8th pole, leading the way with Sully pressing three quarters back second. Two more, I don't get it, and Worcester right together. Another couple, Speed of the Nile has lost ground. At the rail comes Tiz Talk, and a long way to the last one perk. Hejazi pestered by Sully with a quarter of a mile to go. Three more. Worcester is starting to unwind in the clear on the outside, and he's becoming a threat to Hejazi with a furlong left to go. Hejazi, however, opens up. It's a three-length lead. 
Worcester finishing strong. The one just too strong class wise. Both the four and the six ran good. But one was just strong. Man, for a moment there, I thought the six was going to beat the one. Then I thought maybe the four could get up there, but the one just had another gear. Very impressive. That was very impressive. I, both, I tell you what, both the four and the six ran winning races. I, I would put a note on that because sometimes you don't remember. I would put a note on the four. The four improved a ton. And also the one broke slow. The one broke slow and still did that. And the six horse broke on top. So very impressive by the one Hajazi. All right. So let's, we're doing the coast to coast right now. Don't yell at me. All right. So. Oh, it won't matter anyways. Okay, let me go here coast to coast. I could be having internet issues right now. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, so I don't know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, so click on the coast to coast here. Click on uh, race number one, and we'll click on a $120 ticket because it is a $1 denomination, and we've got the four, five, and six in here. Here, um, the one horse is seven to two. This is an oldie play. This is a really good play. Top win percentage is the three horse and only 29%. But it's and, and the four is the second at 25, but both of them aren't in the on, aren't in the EE picks. And the one horse is seven to two Equine Edge Morning Line and the top Equine Edge pick, and it's eight percent. So um that's somebody you might want to look at. I basically um, this horse is coming in from Hawthorne and um for for Larry Ravelli, Jose Ortiz, who's one one or two on the card today. That's just definitely one to consider. I thought the race was wide open, but that's certainly a horse you want to look at. Listen, Reyes is riding really good right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if this horse ran a huge race. So um, I would definitely, you know, maybe consider really using the six horse here. There's a lot of uh, mixed stuff going on in here, which makes it really tough to, to, uh, to calculate. So, um, but top back one edge pick. And EE morning line, but the win percentages don't like it. The SOR is a bit low. So maybe keep it spread out there. Here, we talked about the one and the two. Um, possibly the Equine Edge long shot. Maybe take a risk here in the coast to coast to single the six horse. Um, and by the way, Reyes is aboard this horse. It's got a good win percentage. It it seems to uh to to fit. So and then in here. I probably would add this horse in here. No reason to, to leave that out. Um, all right. So one minute, but this is the uh, this is the this is the bet I'm recommending.
going to take a chance and single the Equine Edge long shot in the fourth leg. That's race number, uh, or that's the fourth leg, not race four. Okay, so four, five, and six in here. Let's see here. The rail is at 49 feet. I'm not really worried about that, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, because the only horse really oldie that has any speed in here is the nine. Right. The nine horse has speed. Equine edge is second pick. I don't really see where the, um, you know, it's in comparison to the rest of the field that that nine four has no speed. These horses I eliminated seven has some speed. So I think seven will stop. So seven and nine will go to the lead. Ten's got a little bit of speed, but going to stop. So I don't necessarily think this horse won't get the trip in this race. And you, Alan's not even using the six. I really like the six. I think this this horse has been breaking bad. I want to see Reyes break this horse good. I think the jockey change is going to make a difference. Reyes is riding really good right now, and I think I think in a in a tough sequence, if you're going to make any money, a horse like this is a horse you know is what you will have to take a chance on. I don't really see who's the other horse in here. Who would you single in this sequence? Who would you single? So I'm just taking a I'm taking a chance. Do I love the six? I don't love it, but I like it. It's finished. It's finishing well. It gets a new trainer in Gutierrez. Uh, Reyes gets a board. Reyes is on fire. In a race that's kind of wide open, why not? Yeah, I don't hate that single. I'm, am I confident? Not at all. No, but I don't hate the single at all. I think the six horse is one of the ones. Why not take the new connections on the six horse? The horses are at the gate. It's Look at the win percentages. I mean, they're just wide the open. First racing, coast to coast, pick this five. eight arguably is going to be your favorite. It had the lead going down the stretch in its last race and stopped today. and was Kicking pulling early. Turf at five furlongs, nine to five on fire and spice. As a ton of proven form on the synthetic. Was 32% to win and lost. Five to two, full money. Yeah, I, I Seven like to two for glitter up. So four, five, and six, the key contenders here with the one, Traves. All right, so we have the four, five, and six in here in the Coast to Coast Wagers. Uh, good luck here in this uh, race number eight. To speak of under Paco Lopez. This Coast to Coast Pick 5 pool has just got over $200,000. So everybody four, doing something going different. Carl going with a four. dialed in. Sylvain going with the six. Babies dialed in. And the eighth. Very short. Five furlongs on the turf. Usually They're speed holes close. in these races. Racing in the coast to coast pick five. Level beginning. Looking for the early lead is oh Barracuda with Fulminate right alongside. Treves is sent forward at the inside. She's going to try to hold rail ground. Out in the center is Sweet Madame Blue. Wide on the course and babies dialed in. Then Fire and Spice and Glitter Up. Turby is last of all as they chase Fulminate. Fulminate to the far turn. Five just had to check up there. Over to the rail. No matter what Treves it does, seconds, especially if it runs good here, third. you the want to put that in your notes. Moving up on the outside to take fourth, back to fifth as babies dialed in. Fire and spice starts to get underway with six. One looks all out to me. Seven looks all out. Six is coming on the outside. Twenty-one and one for the opening. The five is going to come on the outside of that. Fulminate in front the length and a half. Traves takes aim second. Three back to glitter up. Then fire and spice and babies dialed in. Eighth of a mile to go with the lead. It's full. Oh, no, but this one is coming back. And she's gathering in Fulminate. It's Traves to the top. Traves wins. Good battle then for second. Two mm. to call. Four, six, one, four, and six. Or glitter up in 55 and four.
Who liked that horse? Yeah, I really thought we had it there. Came in one. I don't know who got second. Very close. Three minutes before Golden Gate. I think the four held off. Yeah, four held off the six. JR got it. So Oldie used that. Art likes his start. JR likes his start. Cindy stayed alive. All right, we got um, Golden Gate race number one coming up. All right, let's get out there. I mean, you had you had like four or five horses right there that were near the wire. That was just a, such a wide open race. And if you and then you get one of the favorites to win the race. Sinnott and Grin in here. Um, huge base advantage for the two. Huge class advantage for the six. So, I mean, the two is going to be on the lead and can be awfully, awfully tough. But it's going to have that extra half furlong it's going to have to get could help the six get there. And there was a lot more speed lined up than what's lined up here today for, for the two horse. So, you know, you would have to consider that horse for sure. The other thing we don't know is this horse is dropping huge in class, broke last. We really don't know if the five horse can run. I do know it's Equinedge's second pick and seven to two on the Equinedge morning line. So maybe the five horse is one that we have to consider. It is. Is he going to run back? What's up, Wes? Okay. Eighth race winner is one, Traves. Second is four, Fulminate. Third is six, Glitter Up. Fourth is five, Fire and Spice. Finishing. I don't like the three. I don't know what the five is going to do. That 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 makes me a little insecure here, as I don't know. Um I know that the six should get a really good trip. This horse is a good breaker. The two is a good breaker and going to have the lead. Um, in the last race, the six horse faced a 38 group and was right there, whereas this horse faced a 30 group. So the six horse, I can't see why the six horse can't run a good race. And uh, they're dropping them in for the win. Andy Mathis takes over. was one to two on the Equine Edge morning line. So and for the first time this afternoon, the red light is flashing on the starting gate, which means we are getting close to a start, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you see that red light flashing on the again, starting and gate, I don't know what the five is going to do to a start. So make sure to get your bets in. The one horse was six to one in the last race and, and did not fare well against the six horse. I don't know that I see that changing. And I don't know what the five is going to do. I, I would imagine, I, I still would go with the six. You think the one will be closer?
party foul is loaded to post position number two. He's the first one to step in. Here's Whisper and Wink. I think the six is going to be all out from the beginning, Whisper and, and I think he'll catch the two. I, I think you might see the six horse in second. Mystic Tbilisi. But I would I would probably I'd take six two for me. Two more runners to load, Sinning and Winning to the outside. Knowing that I don't know what the five will do, but I, I think and winning, six Rancho horse just looks Red too classy for the these. Lineup. And I like the post. Rancho Red's in. We're ready to go. We're off and running at Golden Gate Fields. Party foul out towards the lead with his stable mate, Sinnon and Winnen, who takes back. Party foul with the lead. Sinnon and Winnen strides into second. Rancho Red alongside of him now. Mystic Tbilisi at the back of the pack with Whisper and Wink. And they're only three lengths behind. A compact quintet makes their way See, down the See, the two back horses trying to preserve foul. the jockey. The way and I don't blame him for rail. doing that, but the, the truth is he'd probably be better off getting a little bit further Rancho behind or in front in of the other horses like the six horse who's classier outside another length and a half right mystic tbilisi and whisper and wink they're together with three furlongs to go one by two by two as party foul continues to pave the way and turns up the heat and opens up two lengths and he's firing with his fastball today party foul quarter mile left to go two ahead sitting and winning in an all-out drive right now to catch his stable mate mystic tbilisi in the third they're down the lane party foul with a furlong to go he's two ahead in second sitting and winning trying chugging along here on the outside mystic tbilisi trying to get up in a second he's gaining ground but party foul still clear party foul by two party foul will win party foul gate two two wide. five six second mystic to man that pace advantage is just huge for that second spot two five six whisper and wink and no Rachel excuses Red for the six up. horse perfect trip that pace that when you have that kind of pace advantage wow six horse really no excuses had to sell for third. The five horse who we we couldn't really read ran a good race. Number two, got party second. Foul was first. All right, let's get out to Laurel Park for race number eight. What's up, Oscar? Okay, so the seven horses, Equinage, long shot, top pace number. We got a big GSR. The GSR wins 25% of the time. That's an 18-point advantage on the GSR. It doesn't really mean too much to me, only because this horse has always had a big GSR, right? So, I'm you know, it really surprises me that this six horse on this big drop but look at this this horse. I mean, it ran one good race at forty three to one, six and a half furlongs, um, and I, and I, I can't make sense of that because the rest of the races were pretty much really bad. So I don't know what happened here. Could it run that race again? I guess it could. The only thing I will say, maybe this is the type of horse that needs to be near the lead for its best, and because of its it, it's uh, it's well, no, it doesn't it doesn't really have a class advantage here. I would probably lean against the six horse, honestly, even though it has that class and that GSR. And but again, that's just my handicapping. Oh, you had the two six five, Tony. That's a nice bet, Tony, though. Good bet. Um, I saw this race earlier. The eight horse contestation. I mean, this horse has a 27% win. But when you're doing it in a 12-5 claimer, it's just a really hard one. I These horses are like 50%. They either just, there was a horse like 51% yesterday, first time starter in a 12-5 race. And it, it uh, I gave it out and it, it stunk. So. But it, it's got a top GSR. This horse broke from the rail and there was a runaway winner last time out. I mean, this horse always tries. So I would imagine this horse will try again. And so. 
super money. This is a tough race. You know, don't forget, I'm going to like, I'm not always going to give a pick. I'm just going to kind of, my job is to just talk about the horses and then your job is to bet it right. Sometimes I'll have an opinion you on how to bet it. Okay. Um, you got the exact talent. Nice. That's a good exact. I imagine that's going to pay good in, in this race. I'll, I'll tell you horses that are interesting to me. Um, the Equinage long shot sweet factor is interesting. I think this horse could get a good trip from that post. It seems to be the fastest horse in the race, and there doesn't seem to be much in here. And if it was going to get beat, it would get beat by the uh, one of the first-time starters. And of the first-time starters, um, I, I think all three of them Super look decent. In, five alarm, free count. They all look decent. Probably I don't like the two-horse much. Um, Waverly. So I'm not going to be much help here, really. I kind of like the Equinage long shot a bit, to possibly to go gate to wire. I don't know how good the eight-horse contestation is. He's 28% to, to win, though. All right, so sorry I'm not going to be much help in here. It's just it really is a wide-open race and kind of tough. Concert Hall. This horse keeps coming back to me, the five super money. There's something Sweet interesting factor. about that first-time starter. 25, 25 to 1 is awesome, Alan. Contestation. Valley High. And they're off. Sweet Factor, very fast away. Five alone freak out, set up for early speed and gives it in. He's badly high. They're on the outside. Five star friend is fourth. The opening furlong. Waverly is in fifth. And Anath is racing in sixth position. Contestation alongside of that improves just one spot. Another five lengths back. Concert Hall and Super Money trailing the field. Heading over the far turn. Five alarm freak out, getting pressure from Bally High. Moving up second on the outside. Sweet Factor right there between horses. Back in third position. Five Star friend looking good now around that far turn. Contestation and Waverly, they got five to make up. Bally High leads the way around the turn from five and I'm freak out. And five star friend is coming to join three deep on the track. And Sweet Factor is racing in fourth. Two more lengths. Contestation is fifth. Waverly's got a shot two down to the inside. The others have to pick it up. Anath is next with Concert Hall and Super Money trailing the field. Top of the stretch. Bally High in front. Five star friend set down to the outside under drive. Sweet Factor's coming back for more down to the inside. For a long left to go, Bally High wandering a little bit toward the center of the track. In between horses, Waverly. Waverly's not got run up between horses. Sweet factor out of the inside. Bally High just in front. Bally High looking for the lower line. It's Bally High in front by two lengths. Bally High and Gino Bello. Bally High from Nine Sweet seven. Factor second. Then it was Waverly third, followed by a nap and nine seven. What's up, Michael? Um, so I think Bally High looked like one of the ones, right? In a wide open race. The first time starter didn't run. And um, Bally High ran a good race. And showed a lot more speed today. A lot more speed. And partly that could have been because of the post position. So ran good. All right, got Santanita race number two coming up. Now, we talked about this race. Um, I like Sacred Beauty in this race. Reed Saldana is a good trainer. On the rail. And I would imagine, well, there's some speed in here. The two is going to have the lead.
two is the two is fast, no doubt about it. But it 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 also is lacking a bit in class, and there's some horses here that are facing easier as well. So. I think the of the class horses in this race, the one gets first run over the three. It's the reason why I like the the one over the three. I, I like the Equine Edge picks. I, I like the one over three. The the four horses form. You had to throw this horse in if you're using exotics. It gets 115 pounds, but I don't necessarily love this horse. So I, I would say one over three. Um, as far as a trifecta goes. I love taking horses like the five to pick up pieces when a lot of the contenders are stopping. Um, the Equine Edge long shot as well. Like, let's see here. One, one, one. I mean, this four is going to run. I, I would imagine this four is going to run. So I don't want to discount this horse. Let's see here. Three, one, four. Three. Now, is when I interpret these numbers, the four horse should run a good race. I, I think you're looking at a lot of chalk here. Um, I think the three is going to come from behind. I, it might be worth just doing an exact a box one, three, four. It might be worth it. All right, they're at the gate. But I like the one best. Last one to load will be hot on the trail. They're in the gate. And they're off. A broken breeze here, Secret Square, headstrong and taking the lead. Chevet Arbiter comes through on the inside and hot on the trail is close up and on the pace too. A broken breeze who broke on top is now in fourth, about three lengths off the lead while racing in between horses. Sacred Beauty having to just back off with no room at this stage, three off the lead and another two back to Chow Mar. They pass the six furlong pole and Chevet Arbiter will be the leader. Has it by a length to Secret Square second, hot on the trail, a three wide third. Then it's a broken breeze in fourth and Sacred Beauty at the rail in fifth. About four lengths off the lead, heading toward the half mile pole. Another four back to Chow Mar. Chevere Arbiter with a half mile left to go will be the leader by just about a length with Secret Square between rivals second and hot on the trail outside of them. A broken breeze, secret beauty, still about four off the lead, and nothing yet from Chow Mar. Chevere Arbiter with three furlongs remaining, leads it by a net, doing it well throughout thus far. Secret Square trying to apply some pressure in second. Sacred Beauty is now called on with a broken breeze. Three is running three really good. Taking second. The one's going to save ground on the rail, but Chabert it's going to be for a minor piece. I think the three is the winner here. And turn for home. On the inside, Shabir Arbiter, but a broken breeze with solid momentum. There's room for Secret Beauty along the inside, but it's a broken breeze with a 16th to go in the center of the track, clear by three. Sacred Beauty moves into second late. A broken breeze Rewind. wins it by two. Sacred Beauty second. Shabir Arbiter third. You know what you don't see in a race like that, which is why horses can come back and all of a sudden they, they beat the other next time out, but the the jockey on the three really gave this horse the, a, a really nice ride, really nice ride, um, Maldonado, and he outrode Franco is what he did. I mean, and and maybe the rail could have been in this situation really hurt the uh, the three, but he could have sat back, but he was really aggressive and he put the three horse and and Number Harris three, now probably at thirty percent win, but he second, you know Shabir those are the two top win percentages five, by far, fourth, top back one edge picks. Two, five, so hopefully you guys had that. That wasn't very. That really wasn't very difficult. Um, one of the things you you look at, and I know we only we had the one, three, and four in here, but when you look at this, top back one edge picks, 
three and one. Top win percentage is three and one. Um, EE morning line, top two by far. I mean, those are pretty much signs. Oh, look at the GSR, top two GSRs. So, and there's just a lot. When we talk about stuff, the metrics pointing towards a couple of horses, it, it, that's what it pointed towards. And did that four get third? No, the two got third. So that was the pace horse. I'll give you guys, here's a, here's a tip for you that might help you. Um, and I, I miss this. There's just so many factors that you have to consider, but if a horse is, was first, second, or third in its last two races, so you got the one horse that was second in the last two races, three horse was second in the last two races, two horse, no, six horse was fourth in the last two races. Same with the, the, the five. And the two, no. And the four horse, no. So if if you if you weren't in the top three finishes in the last two races, then you have like an 11% chance of winning, even less. And the only horses that came in first or second the last couple of starts were the one and the three. And I missed that, by the way, in my handicapping. Now, we, we only use the one and three, but that's another way of handicapping. That will, you'll, you'll look at that and it'll prove true. Horses in their last two starts, if they weren't at least in the third position, win such a low percentage of the time. Okay. That was based on statistics that we ran about a year ago. In the run happy winner's circle is a broken breeze. A seven-year-old Bay Mare by broken vow. They're on the track over at Golden Gate Fields, uh, Goldstream Park's in three minutes, so we'll go out to Goldstream Park. And this is the second leg of the Coast to Coast. And, I, you know, I had mixed feelings in this race. Um, I thought the six was a good long shot in here. You know, if you think a race is wide open and you think the favorites are vulnerable and no one's really getting bet, why not take a horse like this six horse? Kelsey Danner, Reyes, who's been on fire, and he knows this horse well. He's already won on this horse once, and you're getting 10 to 1 on this horse. So I think that the um, this six horse might run a good race, and now you just have to decide how you want to bet the horse. It's going to come from behind. The two and the four. The four horse has three second place finishes. Look at going eight furlongs on the dirt. So I mean, it tries, but it, and it, look, it had the lead here and got second. Got you know right here, got second. Right, right here, got second. So you can see that is this a horse you really want to trust on the win? I mean. It can win, but I don't know that I, I can trust it. I, I think that maybe. You know, this is the Equinage long shot, and this horse ran like hell against Tiger last time out. And uh, but did get bet to nine to two. Now stretches out. The GSR goes down a little bit. I don't love the horse, but it has some speed. Let's see here. In this race, Tiger actually showed the lead. I think that you're gonna see the two horse be more aggressive on the lead this time. I think these two could duel. I don't know what the one's going to do. This is a top back one edge pick. Again, it's coming in here from Hawthorne Park for Ravelli. Um, you got it. We will. We'll do that. Um, well, I mean, you got Saya as a board and Crichton claimed his horse for $20,000 last time out. So, you know, I would I would give the seven a good look. I like three, six, seven. 
for what it's worth. Three, six, seven. But how to bet it? You know, maybe this maybe it's an exact a box. I don't know. I don't, Scott, I don't, you know, coming in from Hawthorne Park, it's only 8% to win. It is a top pick. It's got seven to two on the Equin Edge morning line. It's a it's a rough one. It on the SORs, anyways, it's it's facing tougher. By California Chrome. I just would have expected this horse maybe to be lower than than uh, than nine to two. But again, I like three, six, and seven. Uh, I the the uh, the six is my my long shot. I think the six is going to run a good race. So I'm going to just do an exact a box myself. Three, six, seven. Yeah, I've had a good morning. Um, again, it's races like this where it seems like the long shot will win many, you know, many times. They're at the gate here for the ninth. We got six minutes before Golden Gate race number two. And then uh, over at Santa Anita in race number three, we'll play, uh, we'll look at the pick six. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not dissing it. I'm not dissing at all. I it, but look, I mean, this horse is seems to be lacking in class a little bit on the one. But I mean, look at this horse. It likes to win. Four wins and a second, two second place finishes and six tries. I mean, but I don't know. It seems like Rebelli does good in the Chicago tracks. I mean. Now defunct track, but the outside are at the gate of Chicago. It's now post time. Moving in for race number nine, second leg of your coast to coast pick five. Two to one. Slim, Sportsman Park. Yep. Slow slider. All right. I'm hoping for me. I'm hoping for the six horse. That's my waiting hope for Duop Don and Hercules waiting for Duop Don and Hercules. Hercules to take the outside. Hercules to take the outside. They're at the post. They're at the post. And they're off. Squeeze back a touch at the start. Was cozy, my boy. Good start out wide for Hercules. Down at the inside, of Certico has speed. Splitting them, Tiger won't be far away. Cozy, my boy, comes away in fourth. Followed fifth by Duop Don. The two at the back are high brow and slim, slow slider. Out of the chute onto the main track as Certico and Tiger are heads apart for the lead. Up on the outside, Hercules is now third. Cozy, my boy, is there fourth. The rest are at the back, led by slim, slow slider and Duop Don at the fence. It's high brow. Last of all, the quarter time was 23 and two. It's an energetic pace as they head four and a half furlongs from the finish. A Certico and Sonny Leone in front to half a length. Tiger latched on to him second, two back to Cozy, my boy. He improves to take third. Hercules ridden already while racing in fourth. A length and a half to slim, slow, slider. He starts to find his best stride. High brow and doo -wop down at the back as they round the far turn. Tiger starting to get serious. Here's a move from the back from slim, slow, slider. He's sweeping up five wide. Hercules between horses with Cozy, my boy. As Certico drops back, a quarter of a mile left to go. Light handling from Junior Alvarado on Tiger. He has the lead by a length and a quarter. Slim, slow, slider. Grinding home while second. Assertico is back to third after three quarters. In 112 and one, now there's an eighth of a mile to go. Alvarado asked Tiger to finish what he started. He has a two and a half length lead over Slim, slow, slider, who's now second. Assertico is third, but nobody's going to get to Tiger. Tiger at five ah, and two. Four, three. In front. Slim, slow slider was second, third. Four, three, two, seven. Then Hercules. All right, we'll go to Golden Gate Fields. And then we'll go to Santa Anita for the pick six. One didn't run. All right, Mr. Navigator is your 
two to one favor right now, nine to five on the Equine Edge morning line, has a good pace number. So we know it will be sitting right outside the one horse who's got a 21% win chance, top pace number, good class, seven to one, the Equine Edge morning line. You know, this horse is completely being ignored. It's dropping in class. It looks like hell on paper. Um, these horses can wake up. And when you look at this horse's style, it certainly looks like it needs the lead, doesn't it? That's 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 the type of uh, what it looks like. Now, the six horse can rate. So maybe what happens is, is the one horse gets the lead. The six horse has the outside post. There's no reason for the jockey to get crazy, Chavez, and 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 push this horse. And look at the jockey trainer combination. Chavez and Wong in six tries, they've won five races. <laughs> Put it on, Doug. Put it on. Um, so I would imagine the six is going to be tough. Would I love the one horse to stay up for a second? I would, but I do think the six is going to be awfully tough. Or... I, you know, I really do like the six horse. I, I like this three horse as well, possibly to come in second. Now is a two lifetime. The last race, throw it out. I don't know what happened in that last race, but throw it out. This horse is better than that. It's been facing better horses. Jonathan Wong. Jonathan Wong has this horse. You're seeing Jonathan race. Wong exact at 6 3. That's what I see. The one horse needs a lead, probably going to stop. I'm, I'm going to play against the one knowing that the one might run good, but I do think it's going to be six, three. I really like the six to win. And maybe you're looking at a, a horse to finish third, kind of like the, the two doesn't have much class. The, the four horse possibly, let's see four horse again, this field at Santa Anita on the synthetic, the GSR goes down. Brookies tap it to the inside pose. I would like the Speed two or the crazy. five, the two or five for third. Yeah, I think you're looking at a Jonathan Wong exacta. Subo. So I'm going to do a box there. Although Star Sailor, this two horse is getting bet. Speed crazy. But this is a yeah, this is a step up in class. I know this horse looks good on paper, five. and I think that's one of the reasons that people are betting that. Mr. Navigator to complete the line. I'm I'm still on the six horse. All right, we'll see what happens. Let's see if this two Mr. is all Navigator that in this race, it, but it's got to move up in class here. I'm hoping that I'm on the six horse, six three for and, me. Uh, we're up. Mr. Navigator on the far outside. Broke alertly, takes back. Nightproof clears off up top. Sumo taking second, and Mr. Navigator is on a hold right now. He's been taken back to third, approaching the turn. Star Sailor moves outside of him into the fourth position. Brookie's tap it, rides the rail in the meantime. And Speed Grazy is at the back of the pack, and he's five lengths off the loose leader. Nightproof, who has things his own way. Sumo a little bit keen on a hold behind the speed. He's about a length off this leader, approaching the back stretch run. Star Sailor in third. Mr. Navigator finds himself on the fence now. He's shuffled back to fourth to race alongside of Speed Grazy, and the trailer is now Brookie's tap it. To the back of the pack he goes, and he's seven lengths off the top pair who speed the tempo up down the back stretch. Nightproof, just the neck in front. Sumo engaging him from the outside, and they pull four lengths clear. Now about five. Mr. Navigator going well up the rail, takes third, now joins Star Sailor. Speed Grazy kept in the clear by Catalina Martinez, three wide, and a gap of two and a half to Brookie's tap it being asked for more, not picking up the pace at the moment. Around the far turn, Nightproof and Sumo, stride for stride, Nightproof with a nose in front, Sumo's right there. Three back, Mr. Navigator closing in. Speed Grazy under a hard ride to get going, he's into fourth, he's got to pick it up. Mr. Navigator got the jump 
up on him. Nightproof still in front. Sumo's trying to come on three, get second. Come on, three, get second. Stop two. On the far outside. Come on, three, get second. Picking up the leaders, approaching the second. He's taller them and get second. Mr. Get second. Going for home. Get second. Mr. Navigator to win. Mr. Navigator <laughs> I think we got it. One by two and a half. Woo! In the photo for All right. Start safe fourth. Easy. I think we might have got the seven to two we got off on that six horse. Wow. We, that three horse was, I might have got second on the three. I hope so. Wow. Chavez is super hot. Seven to two on the six. I don't even know what the hell happened there, but we'll we'll take it. Um, Number six. I'm just Mr. hoping the three Navigator horse got second. First. Why the six horse so went off at seven to two? Third, on the place I don't know. Fourth as well, running fourth, But that was good. Four star sailing. Please continue to stand by until the photo finish results have been posted and the race is declared official. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got one. Listen, I'm just we'll, we'll take one at a time. I'm just happy to that one. That six looked really good. Shocked to see. I'm shocked to see seven to two. Honestly, I thought eight to five. I just hope. I think the three got up for second. Thanks, Ken. That the two the the class was so low on the two. I just didn't understand at all why that two horse was was getting bet so hard. And that's where the SOR can really help you. It helped us with the one horse in the last race at Goldstream Park. It helped us here with that two horse. Come on, three. One time for the good guys. One time. If the three does come in second, that's a Jonathan Wong exacta. I thought the three got its nose in front, but it was close. We're going to look at the, uh, oh, dead heat. Yep. Good call, Bill. Dead heat for second. That's okay. We're grateful for that. Ladies What's up, Razor? A dead heat for second between number My man. three Subo and number five. You too, brother. Proof. Dead heat for second between numbers three and five. All right. Well, that's four gonna was number four starts. That's gonna smart Six just a little bit, but second, that's okay. Three, five, I don't even care. Like, four like ran four. That was good. What do you do? Six to win. Six, exact the box. Three six. Six year old dark bear brown gelding by uh oh bang. All right. Out of Jungle Girl by Forest Camp. Mr. Navigator was bred in Arizona by Triple A Ranch and is now owned by Johnny. Thabawana, Good call by Matt. By Jonathan Wong. Who's and um, all right, so Santa Anita, pick six. Better than ripping it up. Exactly right. Okay, Santa Anita nine minutes to Santa Anita, race number three. This is also the third leg of the coast to coast. So hopefully some of you are alive. I like the one and the two. I give a, a good look to the three horse bold endeavor who was claimed by Peter Miller for 50,000 last time out and quickly moves this horse to this 80,000. Non one is a two level. This horse actually ran at this level. I want to say three back. Uh, well, we can look and got a third place finish. Yeah. Three back. So um, I'm seeing that type of thing. You know, it beat an easier field last time out. These are tougher. The one and the two are 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 solid horses, and um, I'm I'm honestly not sure which one I like more. They faced each other last time out, and um, the two was thirteen percent to win. Got second by one and a half lengths, and Pratt was aboard. Now Kyle Frey's aboard. Interesting uh, selection for for Mark Glatt. Um, one of the things I don't like, I mean, and and Kyle Frey's ridden this horse five back, but I don't like when you go look at you go, you're changing jockeys every race. I don't like that. You go from Tyler Bays to Hernandez Vasquez, 
Kyle, Hernandez, Pratt, Smith, Pratt, and now Kyle Frey. It's just never a good sign. But this horse lost last time out. And, and I don't know what happened to this horse. Um, tight at the second call, tipped out. I didn't watch the – I don't think I watched the race replay on this. But this time it's 44% to win. And this horse is 22%. It's a rough call. Um, I don't know. I, I do think it's a two-horse race between these two. But I'm not sure. I know that the two horse beat the one last time out for sure. And but they're going eight and a half furlongs now. That can change things. This horse is 44%. It, it's not like it doesn't like to win. It does win. The reason why I tend to lean towards the one just a bit is because of its pace. I would imagine it's sending. But here's the thing. If the, the, the three horse is pretty fast. And it seems to me like the, the three's going to be near the pace. If for whatever reason Vasquez gets really aggressive and pushes the one, then the two wins. If you could tell me what's going to happen, I, I you know, I don't know. Red flag, oldie saying. No, I don't know, Brett. I don't think that's it at all. I don't know why. Could be the owner. It could be a number of reasons, but... It shouldn't take you that many. Those are good jockeys, so it shouldn't take you that much. Um, so I don't like that. Uh, Oldie kind of likes this horse a little bit. Um, it's been off since November. John Sheriffs, Victor Espinoza. They got a third place finish in the first race. Um, you know, this horse has some past class, but that was as a two-year-old. As a three-year-old, and that was last year, the horse only had three races. In 2021, actually, the horse only had one race as a three-year-old, only one. So this horse has its issues. So, but it looks to be training lights out. Look at these workouts. I mean, four of 44, six of 72. Seemingly, this horse is doing very well. Jumps on the dirt. If you look at the GSR+, Plus. Um, this horse really has more breeding for the turf than it does dirt. I would lean, I would lean towards the exotics for the four. I think the four is going to run a good race, but I, I think the one or two will win the race. It is getting a big SOR drop. It's going from 66 to a 60. That's true. And these horses have already been running at this level. So it is the class of the field. That's a that's a fair point. That's a fair point, actually. I, I <clears throat> definitely if there's if there's a price horse in this race, it would certainly be there for sure. I I would agree. Um, let's see what happened in this race. How'd that exact to pay? Well, that, that, not bad, not bad. We'll take that. All right. All right, let's do it. So we'll do uh, the 20 cent denomination. We're gonna do a pick six right now. Don't worry about these X's. Um, that's just a bug in the staging system. Um, I think maybe we had the four horse in there. I think Oldie might be onto something there. But I even think the three horse can win. So let's just see. The one horse looks rare. This looks like a single to me. Maybe the three horse, if we can add it, let's just take a look. Maybe we can get it in here. You know, I was going to throw this seven out because you don't want to use extra horses, but I really can't say with the new trainer who's 19% that this horse can't run good. Um, 
And so I, I'm not prepared just to throw this horse out, unfortunately. But if you were going to throw a horse out and you didn't want to play this big of a ticket, maybe you throw the seven out, okay? In here, I like the seven horse. I'm going to take a chance in what's a wide open race, 38% to win. I like this horse sprinting. I don't think Hopkins is that great. It's only 23%. I think the win percentage, nine to five Equine Edge one in line, Equine Edge second pick, it has a really good GSR. I think even though it beat a, a weaker group last time out, going eight furlongs, I think this horse is is a is a sprinter. So I'm I'm thinking this horse could run a good race. This is gonna be my best single as far as a single goes. In here, can we leave the Equinage long shot out? It seems to need the lead for its best. And the three horse is very fast. Three horse faced three and up last time out. Uh, and this horse can raid a little bit. It was in La Brea. I mean, you, it, it had every reason. And a grade two here. This is a grade three. Baffert spots this horse very well. I, sir, I think this horse certainly deserves a look. The one horse is a Sadler horse. Was third in the La Brea. Um, eight, now it stretches out. You know, I, I don't love this horse, but it certainly deserves a look. I think we're looking at the three and six is what I'm going to recommend. Look at this one. Top Equine Edge pick. Eight to five on the Equine Edge morning line. Vasquez gets off of two horses to ride here on the, the three horse. I really like this for Augusta Melody. I, I think this four is going to run a hell of a race for Tim Yachtin. I really do. This horse is going to get bet. It's okay. You know, musical jockeys on this horse as well. I, you know, I, I really like this four, actually. This horse broke its maiden last time out against a 38 field and now is facing a 60 for Peter Miller. I mean, if there's somebody to do to, to take a horse like this and 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 win it would be him i'm just gonna i'm i'm not i don't see it i'm like he has to beat me i would force him to beat you in that case this horse broke its mate against a 50 group um hernandez bafford he comes back off the layoff off a bit slow wasn't even bet i can see why you'd put this horse in this race you're not going to put it in a claimer but i would try to beat this horse as well um three horse anarchist Broke its maiden against a 54 group. Doug O'Neill takes over. Coming in from Ellis Park, it beat at 9% what appears to be a weak group. I'm, I would, you know, there you go. $32 play. You don't have to play a lot of money, and then maybe we can, you know, hit this thing. Which one, Oldie? Which race are we talking about? Could be a single. Oh, recall and reload? Really? All right, so why would this horse be a single? It barely won, breaking its maiden. Hernandez aboard. Well, it's going to get a good trip. All right, let's not let's not be cute here. Only thinks it could be a single. Let's at least add it. All right, so forty eight dollar ticket. Sound good? That's the ticket. There's Cindy's ticket right there. And also Cindy thinks that's a single. And there's a look at her ticket. Chuck loves red line. Let's not overthink it. You're right, Tony. Absolutely.
second. Vasquez busy. We got five minutes before uh, race number 10 at Golden Gate Field. Santa Anita, race number three. Night Mammoth just, just under a length. Hero status at the rail. Red flag, turquoise colors in third. Then comes Bold Endeavor, been worked upon since the gate opened fourth and joined at the rail by Holden the Loop. They move into the far turn. Hero status down at the rail, traveling smoothly. And Hero Status is the leader, quickly puts a length and a half. Now it's two on Midnight Mammoth, and he's the one to beat. Holding the loot, moving through along the inside. Uh, two is Red just flag loaded. Is next to him. Wow. And then another Goodbye. three back to Bold Endeavor. Quarter of a mile to go. Hero Status holding the loot now makes a nice wow. move. And holding the loot on the outside of Hero Status. Hero Status comes right back. Wow, the one and didn't. The Hero one Status, said, the okay, you can look around down. all you want, but I'm not and done yet. That's huge. And these Eight to five over nine to five. Hero, Hero Status Hero held status off the two. I'll tell you what. He's opening up. I would have been. I would have told you that the two was 100% to win that race. Boy, did I have that wrong. One, two, four. Holding the loop was second. Red One, two, four. Midnight Mammoth fourth. All right. That's the. That was the third leg of the coast to coast. No, that that's just. Um, that's just a bug in the system, those X's. Open them up, Razor had it. And the runner, I do the too. I do too, Brad. Three. I don't know why the hell they do that. Single is home, Razor had the one. You had to be a little worried a little bit, Razor, when that two horse came running on the outside. In race number three, right? So they're on the track over at Golden Gate Fields. We're going to stick at Goldstream Park as race number 10 is coming up. Coast to coast. Here in race number 10, this is the fourth leg of the coast to coast. Now, if you're new to the wager, it goes from San Cena Park or Goldstream Park to, to Goldstream Park. It, it changes every uh, every Saturday and Sunday. But it, it, it goes back from coast to coast in five uh, races and uh, to make up the coast to coast pick five. The very for the inauguration last week had almost $500,000 in the pool, almost $500,000. So this is the fourth leg. So it started in race number eight, first leg of the coast to coast, then went to race number nine at Goldstream Park. Then it went to Santa Anita race number three, which we just watched, which is the third leg. And now back here to race number 10 in the fourth leg. And then it'll finish off in race number five at Santa Anita Park. Nice. Yeah, yeah, the and that's exactly we did see that right. Pace is so dangerous. I don't know how long I'm gonna. You know, Doug, if we're kicking butt and we're doing well and there's an energy in the room, I, you know, you know how it goes. Um, I struggled a bit last week, you know, and and but uh, you know when we're doing well and we're all having fun, man. There's nothing more fun for me. It doesn't even feel like time. You know, time passes. It's like it's well, it passes so quickly. So so far we started pretty good. So, I mean, we're out. We're out of the um, the coast of Co. Well, I am, anyways. Anybody that played my tickets out. I hate that, too. If you don't know that about me, like, you just have to move on. It's so, you can't dwell on it. If you lose, you just got to keep on doing your thing, you know. And But it kills me. I, I don't mind losing. But when you're when you're doing this and you're giving out horses and, and or tickets and it loses, it, it just, you don't like you don't like being part of somebody else losing money, but you do have to look at it throughout the day as a, as a whole you do. But I've been pretty hot th today, this morning. I've done actually really well. I already pulled money out of my account already. Let's look, I'll show you guys. I've been pretty hot today. Win loss. I put in a couple of thousand dollars. I withdrew five. I made 10,000 in wagers and my winnings are 19,737. So I'm having a good day. Um, Goldstream Park, race number 10. All right. So this is, again, the fourth leg at Goldstream Park. Uh, well, thanks. No, it goes back to thanks for sharing your time with me as well. Like we have a, a just, you know, amazing relationship. We're the, the entire Equine Edge team is pretty pumped about this year coming up. Brad. And um, 
you know, we got uh, John's on board as well now. John created all the algorithms. And uh, last week, I got John to come on board. So John's on now as well. And then we've added a lot of new programmers and, and staff and, and more is coming. So expect really big things and new releases from, from us this year. Yeah. So pretty pumped. It's it's really I, I don't just say that. Believe me, I'm if you guys know me, I'm I'm a pain in the ass. I like I want everything perfect and, and everything. It's been, you know, 2022 for a lot of reasons was a rough year um, for Equine Edge, but it wasn't as far as customers. But as far as releases go, it was a little rough. But, you know, you know, we've with this I could go on and on and on about that. But you know how business goes. Right. So the biggest thing is when we do stuff like this, who cares about that stuff? We just want to have fun, win some money if possible and and enjoy each other. And and, and I think the, the format of this is pretty amazing. And we're seeing a lot more people trying to do this now. You guys see that? Remember where it started. But you still have to. It, it, it's not the same if you don't have Equine Edge. You have to have the you have to have the platform. It, it doesn't work the same. Not having the platform up. Um. Gulfstream Park, they're at the gate for race number 10. Uh, this is the last race. The five was claimed for $20,000 impulsiveness. I thought this was a really rough race. The six horse was a horse that we singled on, on a ticket. I think it's a good long shot. So um, other than that, I wouldn't even know where to guide you. I just thought that board certified could be better. I'm hoping that there's some speed up front. That's what I'm hoping for. There's some horses here three, four, seven, the seven and 10 are fast. So I threw those out. I'm hoping that they go flying with the nine and, uh, and it might set it up for, for a horse like the six who doesn't have to be too far back. That's, that's my hope. Here's the thing. Do I, is, is it, is the, is look at, look at the, what's the, the favorite right now is the eight horse at seven to five. This horse is 77% chance of losing. It's a fact. It's only 23% to win. It had the lead here. It was, I mean, this horse arguably has burned some money. Horses like this take so much money. It's got four second place finishes. I'm not putting the horse down. It tries. But from a betting perspective, you might want to try to beat it and take a price horse. And so you're getting the second top win percentage in the six horse board certified, who also happens to be six to one in the Equine Edge morning line, also happens to be the Equine Edge long shot, and also happens to have a really good GSR. Why not? Why not take a chance? The horses are approaching the starting gate. Last chance to wager on race 10. Uh, well, I'm hoping for you, Tony. I'm hoping for you, my man. All right, they're going into the gate here for the 10th and final from Goldstream Park. Pete Aiello has the call. Good luck, everybody. The horses are at the gate. It's now post time. Lining up and moving in for the fourth leg of the first racing coast to coast pick five in the Sunday finale from Goldstream Park. Eight to five favorite number eight, Gooch Go Bra, Miguel Vasquez for Denny Gargan. Live racing returns nice, to Steven. Hollandale Beach from Buffalo on Wednesday afternoon. First post time Wednesday is 12 10. Friendly reminder, we're less than two weeks away from the Pegasus World Cup. It's scheduled for Saturday, January 28th. Tickets available at PegasusWorldCup.com. There, Remigate. And runners away. Good start for Euphoria Star. Vladislav moving up out in the center. Gooch Gobra won't be far away. Here's Quantum Theory on the go. Quantum Theory lands the early lead. Uchko Bra is a tugging second, and Oski Wow Wow is on the outside third. Board certified now takes over fourth from Vladislav, then Dream of a Day and Euphoria Star. It's a gap of another three to Flatter Me, who drops better than nine lengths behind. The two at the back, Love Me Archie, and Impulsiveness. Around the first turn they go, and with the lead, that's Quantum Theory and Jose Ortiz, a length and a quarter. Oski Wow Wow is second from the favorite Guchko Bra, who's still headstrong while racing in third. 
Board certified has now moved into fourth outside of Vladislav. He's in fifth now, about five lengths from the speed. Euphoria stars in the gray and the two path with Dream of a Day down at the rail. A gap of two and a half to flatter me in impulsiveness. And way out in the center of the trailer is Love Me, Archie. Less than half a mile to go, 48 seconds for the opening half mile. Quantum Theory has the lead. From the outside, Oski Wow Wow still second. Locked in is Gooch Go Bra. Vasquez trying to work him to the clear and give him his head. And now he's done just that as here comes the favorite Gooch Go Bra on the outside. Vladislav runs into a pocket. He needs a way out. Board certified working three wide. Then dream of a day in Euphoria Star trying to wind it up from the back or on the outside flatter me with impulsiveness as they straighten for home. Gooch Go Bra has been wanting to run for six furlongs. Now it's time to go to work. And Gooch Go Bra is an eighth of a mile from home and a length and a half in front. From the inside, that's Quantum Theory down the center and board certified. Board certified is up into second, but the favorite's a winner. Gooch Go Bra, length and a half in the end. Eight, six, board nine. certified second, third, Quantum Theory, fourth, Vladislav in 141 and two. Eight, six, nine. All right. That's the end of Goldstream Park. Six Horse ran a good race. It got bet down to five to one as well. It was 11 to one and got bet down to five to one. But let's get out to uh, to Golden Gate Fields. Six ran good. Ran, ran a good race, didn't it? Top back one edge pick was good. Hey, how about this one horse here? Fury Cap over at uh, Golden Gate Fields. 869 up there at Goldstream Park. Good day at Goldstream. Good racing. Hopefully you're still alive in the coast to coast. The last leg of the coast to coast is in race number five, a couple of races from now at Santa Anita. So um, here we have a horse in the, the one horse that's your favorite at nine to five. It's three to one on the on the Equinedge morning line compared to eight to one with the odds maker. It's also Equinedge's second pick. Um This, this is an, I'm just telling you, this is a grab bag. It really is a grab bag. I'm not sure it's worth taking any favorites in here. I'm not going to put, put you on anything other to say is that don't be afraid to do anything in this race that you might, you might catch a price in here. Um, so you look at a horse, let's just say like, who's got value. The Equinage long shot is 18% to win as well as the top GSR. Um, I mean, maybe this horse is worth a play. I don't know what happened last time out. It cuts back in distance, but maybe and the red light is maybe worth a play. The, the one horse the gate fields so the is fast. Their way towards the gate for race number three. But this third race, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's, off it's not all that. The two horse has no speed. Is catching way easier for sure. Um, you can't say it's burned money because it really hasn't been in the favorite. Now it's dropping pretty low here in class. The GSR though for Jonathan Wong drops to a fifty, so it, it's a hard one. So you see what I mean? Like this race is pretty Fury wide open. I don't think there's any reason to take favorites in here. Single the single me out is dead on the up. board. Um, Here's Holiday Hustle. I mean. I don't love the four because it seems to need the lead. What about a horse like the six? Could the get pace up front. Is... Up front, I kind of like the Equinage long shot a little bit. If I think I'm taking one horse in the race, I, I probably would take the two five man. who might get the a good Jack trip. I kind of like five, Ranger three, six. We're ready to go. And uh, we're off. Smooth beginning from the gate. Single me out. Fury Cap. Those two stable mates towards the front together. Fury Cap a little bit quicker. Has his head in front. Down the back stretch. Diamond Ranger keeping things on us from the outside. Pressing the issue in second. And third is Single Me Out. He's racing inside of Affection Autism. Another length and a half to Holiday Hustle. And stretch running McGeorge will attempt to do his best running later. He does have a fast and contentious pace to chase as the six runners sail into nice the going. turn. Nice going, and Tony. Diamond Ranger takes it to 
Fury Cap around the turn. Puts about a half length on him. Fury Cap on the inside has to recounter from there. In third, Affection Autism. Single Meowth has come under a hard ride. Holiday Hustle also being asked to go. And McGeorge is still well, well behind as they swing off the turn where Diamond Ranger and Fury Cap are in their match race right now still. Single Meowth tips outside. He's coming with his run. And McGeorge is getting going up the rail. McGeorge is coming like a rocket. Here comes McGeorge up the inside. Single me out. He's trying to catch McGeorge, who just went right by him, and McGeorge will win from last to first. Six, two, three. McGeorge and Frank Alvarado. Second single me out. Holiday Hustle. Fury Cap were next. McGeorge getting the win. I mean, you know, you can kind of see that, right? We talked about this cheap speed up front, and it's exactly what happened. It ended up stopping. And, um, and yeah, Alvarado gave this horse an incredible ride for, for Joe Steiner. It did look like Sonny Leon, didn't it? Um, and the two horse single me out, ran a good race, no doubt. So horses coming from behind there is, uh, is what happened. All right. So we got Santanita race number four coming up here. And I'm just going to take just a short break. You can see here the three big player in here, first time dirt. Um, the three. I think the one's going to be very tough on the lead. But I, I thought this three horse um, who has a, a GSR, if you look at the dirt tab, it should, it should like the dirt no problem. So um, it's never been on the dirt, but I thought it was these two horses. But I thought the three horse might run a decent race. Oh, you hit that. Nice. That's actually not bad right there. McFlying. Okay, just give me just a couple minutes, guys. I'll be right back, okay? I'm back. Thank you, Brian. Producer Brian. Um, big shout out to Brian as well. Does a, doing a great job on these shows too. Appreciate Brian. And um, again, uh, one, please like the show. If you haven't liked the show, if you click on the thumbs up, it makes a huge difference for our channel. I very rarely ask, but it really does make a big difference. When you do it, just so you understand, if you like the show, just for future, is that what will happen is YouTube will start sending people to our channel. And that is only helpful for everybody that's in the community. So if you don't mind, please do that. Oh, that's okay, James. Nice hit. Um, but we're going to do a new show uh, that's starting next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And it's going to be Scotty Spot Play Weekend. And what we're going to do is, uh, is go over the horses I like for the weekend. And um, that starts next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So hopefully you guys can join us for that. Look, look for notifications. Also, if you click the bell here on YouTube, and if you click that, you'll get notifications of shows, okay? 
So that'll be that'll be huge. So Scotty's weekend spot plays. There it is right there, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and it should be should be a lot of fun. And we'll go over and that'll be by the way, that'll that'll be uh, live as well. So people can kind of talk about horses they like. We'll go over some of the stakes races and things like that. I just think it's a perfect time with this time of year. And we'll start getting some really good races uh, at Goldstream Park, Santanita. I mean, all over for that matter, Keeneland. And so I think it'd be a lot of fun to, to do that. So, all right. Um, yes, Tony, the, the one in three is what I like best. I like the one to go gate to wire, but I do think Russell's, Russell's hustle might run a good race. So for me, I like the one in the three. The Equine Edge uh, second pick is this horse here. I mean, it ran a good race, but you have to understand when a horse is like right there and then stops late, like this horse does, I just really don't like that. This horse keeps doing that. Now, in this horse's defense, it's been 1% and 2% to win, and now it's 10%. So, and now it's an Equine Edge second pick. So you, you have to give it a shot. The thing I don't like about it is that I genuinely believe that this horse is going to be better on the turf. But it's got dirt, dirt breeding too. And so maybe it won't matter. But it's 10%, a little bit low on the win percentage. The five horse, don't test your luck. You know, you always have to look very carefully to go, okay, who can I throw out? Um, and I couldn't throw this horse out. And then you have to look and go, okay, what is it about this horse maybe that gives this horse a look? What changed? What was different? So we see this horse is stretching out on the dirt, but it did it in its first leg. It's 8%. I, I, I just, for whatever reason, couldn't throw this horse out. Now, this is what's crazy. I, I don't know why, but why is this horse all of a sudden 8-1 to one on the Equine Edge morning line? When before, let's look at it. I'm going to guess this horse was 20-1 to one on the Equine Edge morning line last time out. Let's see. 40-1. to 40-1. to one. So now all of a sudden this horse is 8-1 to one in the Equine Edge morning line. But there really is no other indicator in this race. The horse is dropping in GSR a little bit from 70 to 63. Um, but I couldn't throw it out. I couldn't throw it out completely. Do I think it's going to beat the one horse? I don't. The stretch out should be good for this horse. Doug O'Neill as well. So Doug O'Neill's got this one horse and has the five. Uh, Papa Dromo has the three horse, Russell's Hustle. Ramon Vasquez jumps back aboard. Ramon was aboard um, last time out. Blinkers are on the three and Lasix is on the first time. So these top four horses here, Lasix is on for the first time. It's your, it's only, your only guess is to which one that's going to benefit. I don't know. I think we all can agree that Lasix will move a horse up a little bit. It just does. So who will that really help? This horse is getting dirt for the first time. The GSR goes up a little bit. In for a tag first time. It's a wide open race. I think it's in there somewhere. I know we have it, but I just don't know where it's at. So, <clears throat> what do you guys like in here? The happy drug. 1 p.m. on the West Coast. Single to the one. What, Mike, are we talking about? I, I missed it. When you say 1 p.m. on the West Coast, what do you mean? The new show? Dan, you're single to the one? Nice. It should be a good show. I I'm actually excited about it. I don't want to just do shows for, for any reason. In fact, I want less shows with me. But I think that now that we're doing the Scotty Spot plays and we're, we're trying to build that, uh, it, not... We're trying to make sure it, it's it. We're going to show what horses paid, 
what my record is. We're gonna we're like we're really gonna do this up. So in light of all that, I think um, it'll be it'll be a good thing to to do that. Oh, you're alive to all in race five, and you have the one here. Hey, Catherine. Okay, let's go one. So we're all rooting for the one. All right. So we don't want to think about the three. I'm gonna stop talking about the three. We've got uh, two minutes before the race. Let's take a look at them on the What's track real quickly. I would agree with you, but I just fell in love with this horse in the paddock. He's just so cute. He's kind of a, has a silly personality, and he looks great. Um, a lot of muscle tone to him. His mane was braided. I thought the groom did a great job bringing him out here. He gets some blinkers on today. Is there a chance he can be closer? Because a lot of times, turf horses trying dirt, they will not run into that kickback. And he's a horse who, on the turf course, has come from off of it. I think so, and he has the right rider on him um, in Ramon Vasquez that could get him out of the gate and get him to go, as there is kind of a little bit of a lack of speed in here other than the one and maybe the outside horse. Mike, you like yeah, the, the seven? Outside horse we're I couldn't talk you off of that horse, Mike. On. Look very sharp here in the post parade, and good to hear from Antonio Garcia that they expect Dan, this horse yeah, to I've been on, on I've been on Dan's show a couple of times. As a matter of fact, I co-hosted a show with him by the five in um, the trainer, in America. Best racing. Um, I, I went to Santa Anita for that. That was really a lot of fun. And then I was uh, part of the uh, guest field recently. Dan does a great job. All right, horses coming up to the gate for the start of race number four, also the start of the late pit five. I mean, we know the one's going to have the lead. And the one seems to have some substance. There's a lot of a lot of things pointing towards the one. Um, I think the three will improve. When you add blinkers to a horse, the horse all, the horse almost always shows more speed. The one horse looks a bit nervous to me. I'm not going to lie. Looks a bit nervous. Hopefully that won't reflect in the race. It's post time. But I, They're it, loading it, in the gate for the fourth. She looks a bit nervous. The three looked like a million dollars on the track. I'm not going to lie. And... Um, there's a seven acting up a bit. Those, yeah, those were fun. The Del Mar shows. Um, those were a lot of fun. Those were. I was really disappointed that um, Del Mar didn't want to renew. I thought it was great. I hope so, Doug. I, I want I, I wanted it last year. They told me they wanted me. And then for whatever reason, I don't know why they changed their mind. I thought John and I were good partners together. John's a really hustle, nice, hustle nice guy. Up. I really liked him. Don't test your luck. Rain over me. The goal, my goal is to make sure that we've got three or four shows a day. That's the goal. So hopefully maybe in the next two or three years we can achieve that. But that's that's the goal. All right, let's see what happens here. I hope this one, I hope the nerves don't cost this horse late. Um, it, it, the one ahead. looked a bit nervous to me. It's, it's A lot of times that happens with second-time starters. Let's see what happens. And they're off. Looks rare is going out for the early lead. On the far outside, low expectations and deep river now almost clipping. I mean, you you can't like Monday. that at all. Best move into the first turn. For I him. mean, the, the, the seven horse getting the lead on the one cannot like the one had to just give it away. To don't test your luck. I mean, because the seven's going early, crazy, right but the seven's is the seven's in hand doing it. Lengths off the pace being set but by 22 and one. He's now taken in hand. And look at the three horse. He's strangling the three. Moving in on the front runner. Deep River is fourth, two lengths off the pace, followed by Don't Test Come Your on Luck. One. Another length and a half, Rain Over Me, and Glendale. They've taken much closer order. There's a half mile left to run, and Low Expectations is the leader. Has it by about three quarters of a length. Yeah, me too. Far turn. What's up, John? Looks rare it was, I remember. And Russell's Hustle at the rail. Then Deep River fourth, two lengths off the pace while three wide. Five's done. Don't test your luck. Rain over Three's rain being asked, air. and seven is Low running really good. Come on, one. Catch seven this seven. Being nursed along so far. Come on. Three quarters of a Stop, lap. seven. Looks rare. Set down Three's to toast. Now. And Come on, one. One time for the good guys. Come on. On the one time. 
Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Four back to Russell's husband. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Change leads. Go. Get up. And it's low expectations. Right there. Right there. Go. Low expectations. That was a good ride from Mario Gutierrez. Looks rare. Second best. Russell's hustle. Deep river. And One game. of you did have the seven. I'm sorry. Congratulations on that. Good call on the seven. Oh, Mike had that. What a good ride. What a good ride. And, and, and I'll tell you why he did that. It, you don't need to brain, be a brain surgeon to see that this horse seems to be best on the lead. That horse ran huge. No, I never changed leads on the one. All things considered, the horse ran a good ride. That really stinks. That was Mario Gutierrez taking it to Dottori. That one didn't look that great on the track. I mean, that one obviously has talent and ran a good race, but I mean... Seven was just, just dominant. Three horse just wasn't good enough. Yeah. Mario is really under, uh, underestimated. Uh, I, I actually have a lot of respect for Mario. You got to understand, he's riding... In this colony where you're getting, you know, people are getting really all the best mounts and he just does such a good job. Um, and and Redham had Paul Redham has always supported Mario. Always. That's yeah, pretty cool. You know, they won the Kentucky Derby with all have another. I was out there for that. 13 to 1. That horse was tiny. It wasn't even all that. It, it blew me away. That horse won that won that race. I owned a horse called the Black at that time, and we shipped that horse back to Churchill Downs as well. And um, yeah, Mario. Yeah. And Nyquist as well. That's right. That's right, Dan. The fourth is official seven one three four two. All right, uh, official seven one three. No, I, I. Well, I don't think that was a great crop. I, I never thought I'll have another was all that great, but. Uh, no disrespect to, to at all the connections of the horse. I, I just I don't think that the that year was that great. There was a lot of great horses, um, but Mario did a great job. Doug did a great job having the horse ready. The horse was nothing to look at. All right, Sunland Park. I'm just looking real quickly here. You never know if you see something. Three, two, six. Thanks. I think the Equinage Long Shot can come back and win. So if you are playing that, you might want to. Uh, Check that out at Sunland. The, I'm getting, I'm even getting like, I, I'm getting better. I'm changing things up as well when, as, as it applies to using Equine Edge. So I feel like I'm learning and teaching myself a different, a different way of, of using the system to be more consistent. And I can pretty much handicap a race and be within the race in probably 30 seconds. When could you ever do that in horse racing? I'm curious how the six runs, the Equinedge long shot, but that's what I've come down to. It's four to one Equinedge morning line, 20% Equinedge long shot. It's one, one race and two tries against a, a, a 58 group, which is, is 
solid here. And it's got a good GSR. Good luck to your daughter, Oldie. All right. Let's see here. We'll do the same thing here at uh, Sam Houston. Remember we were doing the Sam Houston series, how fun that was? They didn't renew. I was shocked. I don't know. Yep, Mike, we'll do uh, we'll do a late pick five over there. Um, six. So I think the 11 is going to be really tough to beat. And then maybe look at a horse like the Equinedge long shot, the two and the six for a second. So I'll say 11. You guys let me know how I do. That's with 15 seconds of handicapping, okay? All right. Um, let's do a pick five. Here at the fairgrounds, real quickly, two, seven, three. No, that race might be wide open. Okay, pick five. Thank you for saying that, Andrew. I really appreciate that. I was shocked. Like, I'm like, I felt like we exposed in a good way Sam Houston to a lot of people. I had never played Sam Houston until we did that series myself either. And everyone was getting into playing it. You know, we had the night races. You remember that? It was so much fun. So much fun. I, yeah, I was, uh, I was really bummed out that they didn't renew that series. Okay. So I'm I'm looking here myself. So got a very fast horse, nine to five Equine Edge morning line. Um, Holy Jazz is very fast as well. I mean, if these two duel, it could spell doom for for both of them. Um, they're cheap claimers. Can 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 see them now flying on the lead, but this horse is dropping from twelve five down to four thousand dollars. Like, and this horse should be able to win this race. And, you know, if it doesn't, then it'll probably be either the 358 that gets up. Right? So if you have, if you can spread, I would do 3587. But I think the seven's got to be a single in our pick five. Just making sure we don't miss it. Three minutes before the race. Um, six. 
I know this horse has a lot of speed. So does this horse. It can rate a little bit. Um, it'll be on the outside. This horse is going to get first run. And I would imagine be super, super tough to beat. Um, maybe I think what we do is we we probably single this horse here. Freeport Joe is going to be coming on for sure. They faced each other here. And this one was coming on. And they're... There does seem to be some speed in here. So you know what? Maybe we do cover both of them. All right. I think one of those two horses does win that race. And then we come over here. Look at a note here that's old. Bad ride was best, but that's an old note. I don't care about old notes too much. Um, here in this race. Oh, you are. All right. That's race number five in 17 minutes. Art's got the five seven nine. Is it paying anything, Art? Five in the last of the single. At, at Golden Gate, you're talking Goldie right now. Nine forty seven to nine. Goldie, are you saying this five's a single tribal nation? That's not bad. Twenty-four, thirty-five, and seven. Hey, Karina, what is up with you? Have made their way towards the gate for race number four, kicking off the late pick five. I mean, it's a big, big pace advantage here for the five. I'm going to tell you, I think the seven horse can run here as well. And Kevin Radke has been on fire. So I would add that horse. Alexander's dream to the inside post. You're singling the five. Kevin's singling the five as well. I can't single the five. I Locks I kind of like this seven. So I'm going to recommend this. this. Must be the place. Five, six, seven in the last race. We'll single the seven to get the lead and go gate to wire the class horse. And that's the ticket. Anders dream. Too bad. All right. Go great to the outside. There we go. First leg. We've got the one, two, three, and five. Three Good luck, down. everybody. It's Let's do this. The field. We're ready to get. And uh, we're off. Uneventful beginning. Lux Royal Flush showing his customary front running speed. He's got the lead. This must be the place quarter horse out of the gate to keep up with him and turn up the pressure now. Lux Royal Flush with a head in front. This must be the place on the outside keeping things honest. He opens up a length and a half on O oh, Great. Alexander's Dream to the inside. Refi now. He's down on the rail and has been shuffled back to last. Hander's Dream just passed him. And Hander's Dream. Oh, Hander's Dream went down there. That's the five. Hander's Dream. Five went down. Oh, unseated the jockey there. Nobody's okay, really the coming. The one's coming a bit. The quarter pole and two would be huge if the two here. could hold on. Flush. Here comes the three on the inside and the one in the middle. Six is going wide, not really persevering. So it's going to be between the uh, the one, two, and three. Two would be huge at nine to one if it could hold on. It's moving pretty good, and I think it's going to hold on. 
Alexander's Dream second refi now. The two favorites chasing Lux Royal Flush to the line. Lux Royal Huge. Flush wins refi now Huge. second. Alexander's Dream Huge. third across the line. And then, oh, great. The good news is that the horse, Hander's Dream, is okay. He's running loose and nice. he appears okay. I think he's something happened with the five. There. But Jockey Alexander Chavit. All right. So um, that's a good way to start. We got the speed horse, Lux Royal Flush. I mean, you you got a horse that's got an 80 pace, you guys, and it's the Equine Edge long shot, and it got the lead, the four. And look what's interesting about the two horses as well. Look at this. Two wins and a second-place finish against a 55 average SOR. How do you use that horse? What's amazing is, and I, I don't know if we'll finish off winning this, but what's amazing is, is I, I literally did not look at Golden Gate Fields at all, and we were able to handicap that race pretty precisely in, what, maybe five minutes? That's what you can do with Equine Edge. <clears throat> Nine to one is huge when you're looking at an even money favorite in the three. The one horse was two to one. The five was four to one. Pretty incredible. Like, that plays big. So we'll see what happens. I just, I couldn't even imagine playing horse racing without Equine Edge. Couldn't imagine. Couldn't fathom it. I think I would quit. Luckily, we won't have to do that. So the will pays for the coast to coast are as follows. You ready? The one horse pays $7,666. The two horse pays $1,828. The three horse, $2,500. The four horse, $3,900. The five horse, $9,600. Um, excuse me, $964. The seven horse, scratch the six. The seven horse, $2,435. The eight horse, $18,800. And $9,407. 90, 94, excuse me, $947 for the, the nine. Yeah, that pace number is just, just massive. Thanks, Kevin, for that. I appreciate that. But, like, <clears throat> I'm not selling it. It's just really how I feel genuinely. I mean, this shit's just amazing. Like, I've been playing horse racing for 37 years, and, I mean, it would take me forever to handicap, and it was just, it was no, it became no fun. It was just so much work. My eyes be bugging out of my head. I mean, I know you guys have to know what I'm talking about. And you you get this and you just get all these metrics that are doing all that for you. Yeah, it's just, it's incredible. It really is. And people are starting to see it. I knew, you know, at some point, and it's not at a point of tipping yet, but I knew at some point it people would start seeing really. It just takes time. You have to be around a while you know, before people will see that, but it's starting to happen. And and I really, I don't see any which way it, it hurts the odds. Honestly, I don't. I think it only helps. Because you still, it's a subjective tool. I knew that if we were going to create this and give this away to the public, then, then we had to make sure that this thing stayed as a subjective tool. So people are like, well, you're always getting a winner. It's either going to be the top pick, the long shot, the top win percentage, the E morning line, the GSR, the SOR. No, it's not the way it works. You know, the haters out there want to say that. That's not true. You It's just because they don't get it. You're looking for horses by looking at the metrics as a whole to see if these different metrics are lining up towards a horse. It, it's actually genius if you really think about it. So it has nothing to do with that going, oh, you're just trying to find the winner and saying that one of your metrics won. Absolutely not. It's not what's happening. But people are going to hate. And in fact, the, the better you, you're doing, the more they'll probably hate. That actually means you're doing something right. So that's in all parts of life. So it used to bother me in the past. It doesn't bother me at all now. Especially when we have such a wonderful community and, and people that get it. And I'll tell you what, you, I know how excited so many are. You guys have been really patient and not hammering me. And I probably deserve it because I've been talking about a relief for about four months now. Um, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> so when you look at a horse like this, we know it's top pace. We it's, it's got fair class. 
we we feel strongly that it needs a lead for its best, right? We we know it can rate a bit. If you look at the six for long race here, it barely lost and it came from behind. But but by the most part, it needs to be on the lead. It had the rail last time out and showed you know some speed and then stopped. Um, why they sent this? Oh no, this was at Los Alamitos. I thought it was Laurel for a second there. Um, it was only ten percent to win. Facing similar goes up in win percentage. GSR stays the same but draws outside. And the horse can rate a little bit and has the top pace number. This is a major player in this race, for sure. And last time it faced, uh, you know, it was a it was a fifty two. It went gate to wire. Here, this horse has a lot of class. It also is one that needs to be near the lead, but it does have some class. It's got a sixty eight, but you can see. And you look at the five. Five horses got serious class. Now, don't forget, the SOR is not based on how a horse performed. It's it's based on who it performed against. And um, and you look at a horse like this horse down at Del Mar, 40,000. Now it's in for 20. It's going from a 62 SOR to a 56. It was 60 cents on the dollar. Brian Corner, Diego Herrera. It was bumped repeatedly. But... And now it's been on a break, and now it comes in here for twenty thousand dollars. So it we want to look at the workouts here in this situation. December twenty third, seven of 50, 20 of forty five. It certainly looks like this horse is is training forwardly. The Equinedge uh, second pick is Joker Boy the five. It's got the top win percentage. It's got the uh, second top GSR. Uh, these aren't that great of horses, so this drop in class could make the difference. And Brian Corner is a really, really good trainer. Really good trainer. So I would give the five a really big look, but the nine's going to be on the lead. If not, it'll be the three horse, and the nine will be sitting off of the three. Could the three continue to go gate to wire? Uh, you know, I don't even know if Contreras knows this horse can get the lead. Val Brinkerhoff takes over, and let's see if he claimed this horse. He did. He claimed this horse for 25. The horse is in for 20. It's uh, it's on the dirt. You know, they tried turf the last couple of races. I understand. That's fine. But um, this horse is dropping. Six furlongs on the dirt is dropping to a 52 GSR. I don't like the drop. I more see this horse stopping. So, and then the, the five horse gets first run on them. Sonic Breeze certainly deserves a look. How much time do we have? We got a little bit of time. Five minutes. Okay. Thanks for saying that, Kevin. A hundred percent. What I couldn't have said it any better. The same. You got the GSR for breeding. Like what tool do we have that makes it easy from one to 100? It's easy. That tells you a horse doing something for the first time, especially how it might improve. Right. The pace number is the most accurate pace number by far in horse racing. Um, the the strength of race, it, it doesn't matter if a horse goes gate to wire and wins by 10 lengths if it was facing easy horses. But we had nothing in the past that told you whether the race was really strong or not. It did. It took forever. Yeah. I, it's 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 just the truth, folks. Honestly, if you're new or you want to try it, I'm telling you, it's just you give it some time before so you understand it. This is not a miracle worker. It's not going to tell you what to play. You still have to interpret the numbers, and that's the way it should be. But it's incredible. And yeah, sometimes sometimes you sometimes you look at this and you can't say, man, I don't know who's going to win. No, exactly. Sometimes the race just wide open. Nice, nice hit, Stuart. That's a great testimony right there. That's a great testimony. For those of you that don't know me, people that know me know, like, what I'm saying is how I truly feel. Like, I'm a horse player first. That's what I am. And and I wanted to, to at least be a part of hopefully changing the game by bringing tools that were, that were in the 21st century. I mean, the pace number has been on fire today. It, it does. It does. That's fair too, Aaron. Look at, it. it does take a little bit to understand it, but once you do, you're like, Oh my God, you, you can't be without it. Um, 
the pick four. I don't know if you saw the pick five, Imran. I don't know if you saw that. Um, I think we had done a pick five. So here's the pick four. Here's the pick four right here. Again, big shout out to Oldie and Justin on their stretch run show. If you haven't had a chance to tune in for it, it's absolutely incredible. Um, you can come over to YouTube and um, and the stretch run show. Let's go. We'll go Equine Edge Live. My show is Equine Edge Live mostly, but here's the stretch run show. And this is the boys. And um, yeah, this is their opener. They are killing it. They gave out oldie. Maybe you can tell me, remind me, but and you guys are sharing your tickets. They're giving 30% of their tickets away. 30%. And I think they hit for like 900 bucks. You hit a couple of things, oldie, didn't you? Oldie knows the shit. And Justin is fantastic better too. But that's, that's their opener right there. And that, there's a look at uh, Justin. He's, uh, I think he's with his kids today. So we miss Justin. Justin is the one that came up with the booms. And that's how Justin and I met. And um, and so, yeah, it was really great to... Uh, and then Justin and I became friends and the rest is history. But yeah, you never meet a more humble, good guy. Um, so this is the pick four. Okay, Ren. So... I can't remember. We had to pick five too, right? Didn't we? Well, we had the one in three best. Yeah, no. Some of you had the seven horse. I mean, we talked about the seven being one of the horses and unfortunately it nosed out the uh, the one horse. The one horse looked nervous, didn't look very good on the track, unfortunately. But um, all right, so. Ricky Gonzalez here, because we said jog and he's jogging again. <laughs> So we got Sam into race number five. Again, I think the nine's going to be on the lead. The three is going to be either on the lead, but I think stop. The five horse is going to get first run, has class. It's been off a little bit of a layoff here. Last seen for $40,000. Um, let's see. Look at the changes and see if any equipment change. Ricardo Gonzalez jumps aboard. Um, so Cesar Alba is the trainer of the nine. Brian Corner of the five. I think Sonic Breeze, this horse. I mean, if you look at this, like three races at this non-winners of three lifetime, three of them, and the horse just keeps on losing ground. It's just never really a good sign. It's the top back one edge pick, though. Um, going, Cutting back in distance, though, showing speed and now cutting back. Here's what I'm going to suggest possibly. If you look prior to the last two races, this horse was sprinting. Now it's going back to sprint, sprinting. Ah, I just saw this right now. The, look at this. Going eight, eight furlongs. See, look at this trainer, he needs the GSR. The GSR dropped from 70 to 57, goes back up to 70 right now, and you're getting six to one on this two horse, the top Equine Edge pick. I would definitely give this two a good look. I would imagine the two being first or second for sure over either the five or the nine. As far as the seven horse goes, this is not an impossibility. The horse has no speed, but it didn't show speed going longer. Now it cuts back, so it's probably going to be way back, you know, maybe for third or something like that. But I would imagine. The winners between the two, five, and nine. And uh, I would lean, I, I'm starting to lean towards the two horse a little bit. So, um, all right, they're at the gate. So we're going to get out there again. The way I think the race is going to play out, the three and nine are going to be on the lead. Maybe the nine is going to press. Um, it seems to have a little bit low class. The five has the highest class. And uh, I'm a big fan of Brian Corner. I think he's a really good the trainer. The and he's time. going to sit a really good trip if he's okay. And if he's not okay, then the two is going to pick them both up, possibly. And you're getting you're getting some good odds on the two horse right now at five to one. So, uh, and, and if you're not sure what to do, maybe do a two, five, nine exacta box. That might be a way to play it. Big bad Gary going in. Here's Mighty Matt. 
Sawasti to the outside. All right, good luck, everybody. I would imagine this nine is going to be right there on the outside pressing. I'm curious of the five. If the five broke in the air, it's very slow. Two broke huge. Jockey doesn't need to rush this horse. Be patient. He actually is getting a really good trip on the inside. Love this. And the nines on the – I would love to see two nine here. We would love to see two – Nine o or two over nine would be huge. Three normally stops. I'm kind of thinking three is going to stop. One's going to stop. Five broke slow and is rushing up right now. Two's looking beautifully. I mean, early on at least, we like what we're seeing. Joker Boy takes fifth, five off the lead. Then it's Mighty Matt sitting on go and another three back to big bad Gary. So Wazdi. My harbor's dream moves. Three's running a lot better than I had hoped it would run. Harbor's dream runs right by with a quarter of a mile to go. So Wazdi is asked to counter. Sonic Breeze third. Joker Boy is now four wide and fourth. Come on, two. Vincent's Pass these There's horses. To go. My harbor's dream. So Wazdi not done fighting back. Come on, two. Sonic Breeze in third. Oh, what man. The three didn't stop. Look at that. And here's the five. Five was probably my best in the race. Dream. Look at this. And Luis Contreras. Three, two, nine. Photo for second. Sonic Breeze nailed Sawazdi. The three just didn't stop. That was Joker Boy, Matt, Mighty Matt. Ah. Uh. Art needed the five, seven, or nine. And uh, the three horse, the Equinage long shot wins the race. Val Brinkerhoff, first time with him, did a great job. The five broke bad. Three ran good. The Equinage long shot won that race. We we're spot on. Came in three, two, nine. Man, I wish that Equinage long shot would have stopped. That would have been nice. Nice going. God, I hope I was hoping that three would stop. How good would that two nine would have been just beautiful. But Val Brinkerhoff doing a really nice job. And that horse actually sat off the pace, which was well, it had shown it here. It had shown it over here at uh, Louisiana Downs at a could rate. So that wasn't a surprise facing easier horses today, at least after last race at Del Mar, some time off, ran a good race. All right. I think I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to call it. We got, it, there's, there's not enough going on. We got Golden Gate coming up in 10 minutes. So I think I'm going to let you guys go. Um, we started at uh, 2.45. So, so like three hours. It was good. Um, I wish you guys all the best in the rest of your Sunday night. I hope you have a fantastic week. I really appreciate you joining. Um, I, thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week. I believe we've got... Um, do we have two coast to coast shows next week? I think we do. I think we have two golden go. Uh, okay, we can do a golden hour real quick. We'll do a golden hour before I go. Comes up in 54 minutes from now. I'm down with that. Thank you, all. Thank you, Dan. We'll do this. Thanks so much, Brad. Thank you, Cindy. All right, so let's do the. Uh, let's see, why isn't this showing up? All right.
I'm sending Brad a note on these um, missing golden hour EE morning lines. Are you guys seeing that as well, or is that just on mine? So did anybody, did any of you, thank you, Manny. Did, are any of you, did any of you play the, um, over at Golden Gate, we play, had the uh, pick five, right? Let's see here. So we had the two, that's right. So you guys are alive. Some of you probably alive in that Golden Gate uh, Fields pick five. So, okay, so no morning line, okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. That's a bug. So Brad's, Brad will have that fixed next week. Um, so I liked the three and the six in the first leg, so we can lock that up. Um, in leg number two, the three and the four, one, four, and seven. with the five, six, and seven. And I'm gonna look at the Equinedge long shot because it's the Equinedge long shot. So I'm gonna look at that. It's cutting back from 12 synthetic, 10 synthetic down to eight furlong synthetic. It's never been eight furlong synthetic. The GSR is, 68 so that's good you know oftentimes you can get a price on horses that haven't been the distance before and the surface just so you know thank you leslie very much i i miss being back there i loved it back there my only trip back there i loved it so maybe what we do is add the Equinedge long shot just in case. What's the story with this horse? This horse broke its maiden, then came back against winners and didn't run bad. And then it was 65 to one there. Horses like that can come back to run good and bite you. So we're going to add the nine. Okay. We'll do that. I think the 147 is all we need here. So we're going to play a $60 play. That's going to be my golden hour. Okay. I'm with you guys. Nine. All right. We're in it together. Okay. Again, this is the golden hour right here. Oh, that finally popped up, but. This is it here. Three, six with three, four with one, four, seven with two, five, six, seven with nine for a $60 play. Okay. It's not a bad ticket. It really isn't. And there's some opportunities for some, some prices as well. So, and the pools of the golden hour have been close to $250,000, 300,000. So the pools have been really consistent, consistent. They've been really nice. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stay with you for golden gate race number five. Okay. So, And our pick four, well, we don't have a pick four, but 
All right, so this is the pick four if you want to do a pick four. We're taking a chance on singling this dropper here in the 4,000 Maiden Claimer Reichenbacher, uh, okay? And then three and four in here, Freeport, Joe, and Lamas, I think are the, the, the horses you have to beat. And then we're spreading out here with the two, five, six, and seven, and nine, okay? Um, I know that Oldie and many of you are singling the five. It's extremely fast. It's run good. It has every right to go gate to wire and win this race. No doubt about it. No doubt. It does. So I'm not hating on this horse whatsoever. All right. So it's going to be a big favorite. Um, and you might ask, well, why am I why am I playing against it a little bit? Well, I'm not playing against it, but from what I've seen, when you have a big morning line favorite on a horse, and the system is saying this horse should be five to two, these horses can, can you know can lose sometimes. And then also it's still 81% chance of losing. That's why. The two in race number seven. As I thought the two and the six horse would duel. Then and it would and it would set it up for the three and four. That's why. So I'm I'm playing for those two to duel. So, all right. So we're gonna watch this race together. Want more? Matt likes the two, five, and four in here, and we have the two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Um, if you, if there's those of you that want to, well, there's a big four, so you can't really play it that much smaller. Um, but we've got the two, four, eight. Yeah, I mean, see. Yeah, this is a this is a wide open race. Like none of the metrics make any sense, right? They're all over the place. They really are. Like, how about this five horse? I mean, this five horse could go gate to wire. New trainer. Anytime you got a new trainer, anything can happen. It's going up in win percentage. It, the GSR is going up and it's facing similar competition. Like, and look at the, the four horse. It's seven to five right now. 81% chance of losing. And it's three to one on the Equinage morning line. And how about the five horse, Divine Dancing? I mean, this horse has got the top GSR as well. Top pace number, a good win percentage in a race that's wide open. This Divine Dancing, I'm just really curious to see how far this five horse will take them at eight to one. Just a wide open race. But the five's the type of horse that you would put in all the spots, right? Let's see here. So you know, maybe like a two, three, four, seven, eight. Two, three, four, seven, eight with five. Right? Just do an exacta. And then a trifecta. Three, four, seven, eight. With five. Something like that. And then just in case it goes gate to wire, you got to bet it to win. So this is what I like to do in tournaments. What you just see me do right there. I take one horse that I think could be in all the money. And then I, I do that. Um, the no question about it. The horse that's going to get the best trip right now is the three. Besides the five, I imagine the three will be tough, but don't forget, this is five furlongs, too. So the one on the inside, if the five gets a good break, right could be really tough. Espinoza back in the saddle. Looks like we're now ready.
Come on, five. And uh, Laroff, Desert Smoke wins the start. Bound for Jamaica out alert. Lee's going to ease off of her. Here comes Divine Dancing. Hard sent for the lead. She's got her blinkers in front. Desert Smoke takes back to second. Takes a village running alongside. I mean, she broke now. a little bit two, slow. Two lengths clear of Badger Gow with bound for Jamaica. Kiss ride goodbyes. Seven lengths off the pace in midfield. Three clear of Dr. Wysong. And Guardy's World can see them all. A strung out group. And Divine but Dancing five strings them out. Divine Dancing by two with five sixteenths to go takes a village trying to come out of the pack to take second alongside desert smoke under a bit of a ride tries to get closer from third on the fence and bound for jamaica's rolling on the far outside getting into it they all have to catch divine dancing divine dancing by a length and a half yours bound for jamaica on the outside continuing that run and she's up to take the lead from divine dancing dr y song is rolling stay in the third of the track here's stay in third y song and brian Pena. Stay third to the front and they will win a well four two five dr y song overbound for jamaica divine dancing third home or unfortunately the favorite fourth. the we'll two horses so you got the two favorites that came in first and second but you you did get the uh you know we got the horse for third like that's how you can play the um and then you hope i told you i won uh seventeen thousand five hundred dollars on a $25 trifecta with a 10 to one shot coming in third photo finish. So what you're hoping for is like one of these long shots, like the seven horse or the eight horse would win, you know, and something like that. And then that five horse gets third. Right. So that's how you can do it. I mean, we, I mean, the horse got third, nothing wrong with that. Let me see. What do you go off at seven to one? Nine to five though over nine to five, that's too bad. That that's a little unfortunate right there, but we got the, we got the uh, got the try. Let's see here. Number four, Dr. Wysong was first. Second, number two, Bound for Jamaica. Third, number five, Divine Dancing. Fourth was number six, Takes I mean, a Village. Fifth, number I'd seven, like Kiss my money Ride, back. Goodbye. Four, two, like five, five six, back. seven, your top five finishers. Four, two, five, six, seven. Please continue to stand by. Moving on in the pick five as well, plus the pick four, if you played the pick four. Um, Dr. Wysong gets the win. It's too bad that wasn't a big price. That would have been nice. Then it would have been really nice. I don't know. What do you guys think this trifecta is going to pay? I'm going to say, can we get 35 bucks for a buck? Maybe 40 bucks for a buck? I think it's possible. This race was kind of like tough. I know that the four and the two ended up going off, but and now for 50 cents, 25 bucks. Is number four, Dr. Wysong. This okay. race is now official. She's a seven-year-old chestnut mare by Cyclotron. The golden hour. Didn't we just look at the golden hour, guys? Swiss Yodler. Dr. Wysong was bred in California by Todd you didn't Marshall see it? and Andrew Malaski, now owned by Sergio Salgaro. All right, we'll, we'll go back and look at it real quickly. They're coming on the, the track. The jockey is Brian Pena. Um, We'll see you, oldie. We'll see you, brother. You have a nice week, okay? Um, let's see here. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Thank you, oldie. Thanks for for being a part. Really appreciate you, bro. That's okay. We'll go, we'll go look at it. No no problem. Um, let me go back and forth here. Golden hour. This is the the ticket, oldie. I think it was 80 bucks no it was 60 bucks three and six with three and four with one four and seven with two five six seven nine with two five six seven nine so You got that, Gary? Three and 
three six in the first leg of the golden hour which is here at Santa Anita, race number seven. So that's where it starts, 37 minutes. In race number seven at Golden Gate, leg number two is three and four, then one, four, seven in leg three, and then finishing off at Golden Gate Fields, race number eight, it's the two, five, six, and seven, and nine. You're welcome. Okay. Um, all right. And... Um, I, okay, you know, I'm going to stay for this race because I love the seven horse. Okay. So the two's getting over bet, win or lose. It's getting over bet. Um, this was my single in a lot of my plays, the seven uh, Traeger. So I'll stay with you guys till this and then I'm going to jet because Anna's going to kick my butt if I don't uh, go have dinner with her. Um, look, I just think these are not that great of horses. This horse did not face much last time out. It didn't. These are arguably tougher horses than last time, but, uh, this horse is 38% to win. It's really jumping up. I think it's improving. And I, I think that it's got a good GSR. I think this horse, um, is a, I personally think this horse is more like of a late running sprinter type of type of horse. I think, um, and, and I say that, but this horse has tactical speed. But in this field, could be four lengths back. Now, what I'm seeing is the two horse can rate some for sure, but it's going to be on the inside. It's been off a while, Baffert and J.J. Hernandez. And um, it's only 23% chance of winning. Now, it's getting bet hard, but it's also Baffert and Hernandez. And uh, Hernandez is, man, he's just really killing it. I think Flavian Pratt did a uh, did a um, disservice to himself when he left California. I don't know about you guys. When he did that, Hernandez was the benefactor of that. You guys see that same thing? He was. And then when Pratt came back, he lost, he lost a lot of favor with a lot of people. I think he, you know, his agent and him made a bad call. But I think that five and the two are dueling early and the horse to pick them up is for sure the seven with uh, Mike Smith. So let's take a look at them on the track. I guess it's really more, it, you know, it's going to come down to how you want to bet it. Oh, by the way, real quickly, let's see what that trifecta paid. I didn't even see. Wow. Not much. So lost a little bit. Not much though. Now, how do you play this? Well, for sure, you have to bet the seven horse to win, right? You have to. I mean, five to two on the seven, three to five right now on the two. God, I don't see it. Let's take a look at, at what this horse faced over at Del Mar sprinting, right? Hopkins won that race. Yeah, I mean, the breeding on this horse is just okay. I mean, obviously, quality road's good. It's just okay. I mean, if you look at the GSR tabs, 
they're okay. Like, I don't, I don't personally, I don't think this is a steak source. So who's got the more upside? Is it Traeger or is it Hopkins? This horse is in a grade two lost by 17 lengths and it barely won in an optional claiming non-win is the one restricted. And so did this horse, same race, non-win is the one restricted, not the same race, but same level. And this level was a 66 and Traeger's was a 62. So, and now they're pretty similar. Who's going to get the best trip? You got one at three to five and one at five to two. And arguably, maybe the seven horse gets the better trip. And they're at the gate. It's post time. They're at the gate for the sixth. This is named for Rachel's birthday celebration. So I'm on the seven. All right. This will be it for me. Loading in the gate for the sixth. It's the start of the late pick three. Oh, by Let's the way, guys, the I outside. want to give a shout out to Tyler and Andrew who have put this thing together. So from Santa Anita, so big shout out to them. They're in the gate. All right, I just want to see the seven get a good break. That's it. And he and did. They're off. Very nice beginning. And I don't want the five to, to let the two go. He can't. Took charge battles and took charge. The seven's got the really one nice one strides. And, and from that post position, three, really gets a nice trip. And he's closer to the pace than I would have thought. No money. It's and so now you just want to see Mike just relaxing on him. And no early speed from Clem Labine. Into the far turn, took charge narrowly. Hopkins at the rail, Traegar coming after the top pair, three wide and three quarters of a length off them, less than three furlongs remaining. McLaren Vale in the green colors pushed along fourth. I got no money, a long way to Clem Labonne. Traegar on the outside and Hopkins at the rail, squaring off as the field turns for home. Hopkins and Traegar heading head with a furlong left to go hopkins handridden tragar just ahead behind mclaren vale is in third and then i got no money it's tragar or hopkins to the wire tragar is just in front in the final stages and tragar game in victory hopkins ahead back second clem levine came alive late to get third mclaren vale was fourth thank you leslie thank you so much dan we got that nice way to finish that off right Woo! All right. That was a single and a lot of stuff, too. Holy hell. That's right. That was huge. Huge. That's how we started. That's how we do it. Wow. Thank you, Alan. Fire. Huge. Two to one. Perfect trip from that post. Photo finish. Huge. Whew. Wow. All right. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Seven over the two. Perfect trip. Closer to the pace. Thank you so much, Jodham. You too. I appreciate it. Now, I thank you all for being a part of it. Please don't forget to like the show if you get a chance. If you haven't done it yet, please like the show. Click on the thumbs up. And good luck on the rest of the way. You should be alive on a lot of stuff right now. The Golden Hour is coming up next. Again, big shout out to the Strana Group, Santa Anita, Andrew, Tyler. We appreciate you guys and all the EE community and my team at Equine Edge. Well, good night to you guys. Have a good rest Number of your seven, Sunday. Trigger we'll see you next first, week. Okay. Two Hopkins Bye -bye. second, six Clem Labine finished third, and number four McLaren Vale fourth, seven. <laughs>